communities from the police and to educate the public about their right to keep and bear arms. After being denied in an appeals court, opponents of Houston's Equal Rights Ordinance are asking the Texas Supreme Court to help them in their efforts to force a referendum on the law. On Tuesday, opponents of the law filed a request seeking to have the court force the city to suspend the measure until another vote takes place. The law, which passed in May, bans discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity, as well as other factors. Is Austin, Texas becoming a nanny state? Well, that's the question that many are asking after two pieces of legislation were passed at Thursday's city council meeting, further restricting the liberties and property rights of Austin residents. The council unanimously passed legislation banning motorists from using cell phones while driving. Well, that follows an ordinance passed in 2010 that banned texting while driving. On top of that, an ordinance authored by Chris Riley, which requires businesses in Austin with single-stall bathrooms to label the bathroom as gender neutral, also passed. The legislation is intended to make transgender people feel more comfortable, but some Austin residents think the city has bigger issues to deal with. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud. All natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And support comes from Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper, 401ks, and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 reason books free by calling 800 686 2237. That's 1 800 686 2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, August 29th, 2014. Make sure you check out our website at thelibertybeat.com. Documents obtained by the News Tribune indicate that the Tacoma Police Department has been quietly operating cell phone surveillance technology since 2008. The tool, known as Stingray, tricks cell phones by pretending to be a cell tower and collecting data from the phone. Deputy City Attorney Michael Smith redacted much of the documents. However, what can be seen reveals the police department has updated their technology as recently as last year. A number of Tacoma City Council members stated they were unaware of the technology. A Tacoma Police Department spokeswoman stated the chief could not speak about the technology because of a non-disclosure agreement with the FBI. A federal judge dealt a blow to the efforts of Hawaiians who fought for countywide regulations on genetically modified organisms. Syngenta and other biotechnology companies filed a lawsuit against Kauai County after the council approved an ordinance that required GMO farmers to submit annual reports to government agencies about their crops, as well as no-spray buffer zones. U.S. Magistrate Judge Barry Kernan ruled that the ordinance was preempted by Hawaii state regulations for pesticides, plant quarantines, seed quality, and noxious weeds. However, the ruling does imply that the ordinance was not barred by federal law. The implication is that other counties or cities could pass GMO legislation just so long as it does not interfere with the federal or state laws. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from The Cory Moore Show. With a focus on all things topical and liberty-oriented, Cory Moore and his band of co-hosts, including me, keep a sense of humor while attacking the state. The Cory Moore Show, live each Friday night, 9 o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Eastern, at CoryMooreShow.com and LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, August 29th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan, reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. According to a report released today, the vast majority of American children lack the presence of a strong, sculpted male supermodel, with less than 4% of youngsters being taught the important values of respecting runway etiquette, maintaining a glistening six-pack, and walking a catwalk with verve and flair. The number of strong-jawed male supermodels in children's lives has declined to record lows, leaving the majority of our youth unaware of how to get comfortable in front of the camera during an underwear shoot, or even perform something as simple as a sexy but stylish full turn. Stanton went on to say that impoverished communities were especially affected by the lack of Adonis-like male figures and added that children in lower class homes were over 80% less likely to grow into the type of high cheekboned, studly he-men that succeed in haute couture society. Quite frankly, these children are just not getting the necessary influence of a dynamic male supermodel who can both make puppy dog eyes at the camera and also radiate that sort of raw, unabashed machismo that forces fashionistas to look up and take notice. This is the Onion News Network.
This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want by dialing toll-free here. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you in the studio, it's Ian here. Ellen. And Daryl. And don't forget, you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and please enjoy the features you will find there uh, completely free. In fact, you get to create the content. Uh, Everything you see on the front page was submitted by listeners like you and voted upon. You can vote up or down whether you like or dislike what you see, and it's all based on a Reddit-based system. So if you've already got a Reddit account, you're one step of the two-step process, basically, to get there. You get uh, get your account at Reddit and Free Talk Live, and then you link them together in a very simple process. It's all free at freetalklive.com. So you call in about anything. We've also got Skype. Skype username is lrn.fm. Hey, you know, they say if you don't like it, then leave. At least I know I've heard that countless times on the airwaves, having done this show now for well over a decade. Yeah, can't you just move to Uganda or something? Or Somalia. People like to suggest Somalia. Korea. There was the one guy that said that we should move to Korea since we didn't like having a central bank. That was actually not someone on the show. That was someone who we we met in real life who told us that. And uh, Russia, there you go. Ed the Snowden. rolling Russian planes. Could There's join up plenty with... of open space in Siberia that's for sale, I'm sure. Uh, so, yeah, they always suggest the people who love it here in the United States. And there's a lot to like about being in America, but there's also things not to like. And, you know, I think that it's important to try to improve the place where you live. You just so. hate us for our freedoms. No, I, I actually appreciate the freedom that we have. I'm glad that we can be here on the radio talking about these things. I, you know, th- we we don't yet have a. Uh, it's not to a point in the United States where a SWAT team is going to come in and raid a radio studio because of what people are saying. Not, not yet. yet. Not yet. But I think that you know the price of freedom is unfortunately vigilance, and uh, we got to pay attention. We've got to know what's going on out there. And I don't think that leaving is the right idea, although I don't blame someone who does. Like, if you want to get out of the United States and go run to some sort of island nation and live quietly and try to fly under the radar or some, you know, South American or Central American place or New Zealand or wherever you want to go. I've always wanted to have my own island with a moat. You know, I've heard that the Amazon is a nice place to go if you don't want to... You know, be found by anybody. There's plenty of places you can go where you don't want to be found. I mean, you can even do that in New Hampshire if you go out in the woods. Just living during the wintertime would be probably pretty tricky. But people have done it. So, you know, if you want to leave, that's fine. I, I respect that. I don't blame anybody for wanting to fly under the radar. Uh, but there's, if you're going to stick it out, then there's a lot to be done. And in, in speaking out about the bad things that happen in the United States, there's certainly nothing wrong with. But nonetheless, the more you speak out, the more likely you're going to be told by somebody, well, if you don't like it, then leave. Well, according to the story at Forbes magazine about the price to leave, about the fee that the U.S. government charges people to what's called renounce their citizenship, they have now jacked the rates up by 422%. Wow, so they really want people stuck here. Well, what they know is, is that in recent, like the last two years, the amount of people who have been renouncing citizenship have been going up dramatically. Uh, We reported on this on Free Talk Live a few months back, if I'm recalling correctly, that I think 2013 was a a record year for renunciations of citizenship. And then there was the guy from Facebook. I forget his name, but he was the... Zuckerberg. No, not Zuckerberg. No. The other other guy. guy? The guy that helped co-found and then got screwed and then wound up getting his money... He renounced his U.S. citizenship because the taxes were going to be just astronomical. And so this thing that you're talking about, it's what they call the exit tax. Correct. So here's... I'm sorry. So maybe they just found it to be a better source of revenue then. That's exactly what I'm thinking is, oh, we got all this extra business. Well, let's just raise rates. People want to leave. You know, we got them between a rock and a hard place. They think they have to pay us. So... You know, well, can't you just leave, like get a passport, up. move someplace else, and then not ever come back? That's how I feel about it. Why would you want to even bother keeping the government apprised of your location after you've left the United States? I understand they want to keep taxing you or whatever, but why would you bother with that? For purposes of not wanting to be extradited to the United States from whatever country you decide to land in. But so they if have you to- try to get citizenship in some other country, do you... Do you like for do they force you to renounce your citizenship then? Uh, most countries do not, 
But the reason that people expatriate is because they want to get rid of the American citizenship. So then when they go to the consulate and say, here's my passport, I don't need this anymore, Mm -hmm. you guys take it, they're like, oh, by the way, uh, you're a wealthy person, give us money. So just burn it then. Throw it away in the trash can. Something mm. uh, yeah. destroy it. Right, but then that runs you in the possibility of running afoul with the authorities in whatever country you How land in. How would that in. be the case? They don't get. They can't enforce the United States government's laws. In they can't. Portugal or whatever. But if you go to Portugal and then you tell them, "Yes, I'm both an American citizen and a Portuguese citizen," then there's some sort of weird well, don't things tell them with that. visas don't tell them that. and what. Right, and then if. You don't tell them, I want to be a Portuguese citizen, and then they find you in Portugal and you don't have a visa, yeah. they're kicking you out of the country. Okay, but then get the Portuguese citizenship, but don't tell them where you're a citizen. They're probably going to want to know where you're coming from Yeah, in order to get that. But uh, But if you get the other citizenship from the other country... Like you're saying, you don't have to renounce the first citizenship in, in a lot of places to do that. It's called dual citizenship, right? right? So, But then the U.S. is still going to want tax monies from you. How are they going to find you? Because Silence. they share government – the government share information with one another. So if the for, if the Portuguese government can locate you in Portugal, they can tell the U.S. government where you are. Okay, I suppose that's possible, but you could do things to, you know, protect your privacy. So is it even possible? I mean, the IRS to- needs to have an address to send you notices about you owing them money. If they don't know where to send that notice, then <laughs> effectively they can't collect. Right, they're not going to come searching for it's, you thousands of miles away. Right, it's going to be a lot harder, especially if you're making, you know, if you're over there making 20 grand a year serving tables in France or something like that. I mean, it just don't I don't think they're going to you're going to be on right. the radar. And if you and again, with this exit tax, if you have less than I think it's $680,000 worth of assets, you're exempt from this exit tax anyway. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. So I just want to ask, is it even possible in this modern day and age to be a, well, a wanderer or a hitchhiker or somebody who just travels from country to country? It and, is. And it's not have very a difficult. Well, to Michael not Golsky have citizenship. Is, Michael Golsky gave up all his citizenship. So he whatever. did, but he's not traveling around the world. That's he's true. in one location. Right. Yeah, I, I would guess that if you were going to disconnect from contacting the U.S. government about your current tax status and things like that after leaving, you would probably have to plan to not come back to the United States. Right. I mean, there would be certain restrictions on your movement after that point. But I think you could do it easily. I mean, I don't think it would be that complicated to avoid the clutches of the IRS outside of the United States. Right. There are some people that avoid the clutches of the IRS within the United exactly. States. Exactly. There are millions so, of people who don't pay taxes within the United States. I'm not saying that it's impossible. I'm just saying that you know there are steps that you would want to take to make sure that you're not going to wind up getting you know sent back to the U.S. I for say something. to hell with their steps. I am not a citizen, and they can't prove that I'm a citizen. So what's the point in renouncing something that I never had in the first place? And what I mean by that is is for those of you who are new to the show, uh, as Mark Stevens points out on on, uh, Adventures in Legal Land, his website, markstevens.net, there are no citizens. And the reason why there are no citizens is because a citizen is, go ahead, look it up, citizen is someone who owes a duty of allegiance in return for an obligation of protection, meaning that you, as the supposed citizen, are supposed to obey in return for being protected. That's what the duty of allegiance is in return for an obligation of protection. Okay, but even if you claim that you're not a citizen, you still appear to be one in the state's eyes. Because, oh, sure, they think they would you know, think so, when, yeah. they, when they look at you, they see, you know, mostly law-abiding. If they see you breaking the law, they'll, like, point it out to you. But you probably have a driver's license, and mm-hmm. you, you uh, well, I guess you don't own this house, but there's still things in your name. So yeah. That doesn't mean I'm a citizen, though. A citizen is someone who owes a duty of allegiance in return for an obligation of protection, and the government has no obligation to protect. There are multiple Supreme Court cases that make that very clear, including Warren versus D.C. and several others. So if there's no obligation to protect, then there can be no, obli- there can be no uh, duty on my part to obey. Of course, I never made that agreement in the first place, but the agreement doesn't exist anyway. So why renounce something that doesn't exist? More coming up. 
Angioprim can unclog blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is oral chelation. Easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. Just log on to Angioprim.com. That's Angioprim. A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M. Angioprim.com. Angioprim users say they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on to Angioprim.com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better, having fun, and doing more again. Lots more. Talk to a trained Angioprim consultant. Call Angioprim toll-free at 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. Or log on for complete information. Angioprim.com. That's Angioprim.com. Find out how Angioprim can work for you. Get the facts about Angioprim at Angioprim.com. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more. Or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. What does it take to leave the United States legally? I don't advocate you do things like this, uh, but, you know, some people want to cross the T's and dot the I's. Uh, So we'll get into the details on that because they're jacking the rates up by over 400%. The toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. You can also join us via Skype at username lrn.fm. And coming up, Mark is heading out. Mark, the co-host who is not here with us tonight, is heading out to the first annual Marijuana Investment Conference in Houston on September 8th. Now, that is literally right around the corner. That's just over a week away, week and a half at this point. 
He's going to be out there mingling and finding out what the trends are in the ancient and burgeoning field of marijuana. Of course, you know, if you've been paying attention to the news, listening to this show for a little while, that Colorado and Washington State now have legal marijuana. Of course, over 20 other states have medical cannabis that is legal. And so this is a business where it's ground floor. Now, pot's been sold for many decades uh, illegally, but it's coming into the legal world, and that means investors can finally operate on the up and up. Business owners can operate with uh, inside this realm, in a lot of cases, with less of a fear of being raided. So it's a really exciting time now, and there's money being invested. People are looking for opportunities, and this is going to be the place for a lot of those folks to be. Uh, so marijuanainvestmentconferences.com. Go there. This is the very first annual Marijuana Investment Conference. This is not going to be a pothead convention with bongs on sale. This is for business people, for investors, for people who want opportunity, to people who are ready to create opportunities. Join Mark over at the Weston Houston Memorial City on September 8th, bright and early. Go to MarijuanaInvestmentConferences.com. Register early to get the discount. That's MarijuanaInvestmentConferences.com. Use coupon code F. TL, by the way, that way they know uh, where you came from, and we can get credit for you signing up at marijuanainvestmentconferences.com. So, over the last two years, from Forbes.com, the U.S. has had a spike in expatriations. It isn't exactly Ellis Island in reverse, but it's more than a dribble. With Global Tax Reporting and FATCA, the list of the individuals who renounced is up. For 2013, there was a 221% increase. That is, increase in people leaving uh, the United States then, uh, and with record numbers of Americans renouncing citizenship. The Treasury Department is required to publish a quarterly list, but those numbers are understated, some say considerably. The presence or absence of tax motivation is no longer relevant, but that could change. After Facebook co-founder Eduardo Saverin departed for Singapore, Senators Chuck Schumer and Bob Casey introduced a bill to double the exit tax to 30% for anyone leaving the United States for tax reasons. That hasn't happened, but taxes are still a big issue for many. To leave America, you generally must prove five years of U.S. tax compliance. That I did not know. So it's not just about you ponying up some cash on the way out the door. It's also about you being a good, obedient little serf and doing as you're told and filling out all the paperwork. So a young person like like me, I've only paid taxes for two years. Yeah, you're, I, sorry. I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't be able to leave or renounce my citizenship. I don't know if there's an exemption for if you haven't paid taxes beyond a certain point, but that's an excellent question, Ellen. That's that's pretty disappointing. I was actually considering doing that next week. Or like me, but. I don't uh, I haven't paid taxes in a decade. And so therefore, I mean, I would fail right out the gate if I even tried to go through whatever this ridiculous process is. You don't pay our taxes, is. but you can't leave either. Well, <laughs> I would leave if I wanted to leave and figure out the rest of it later on. And if it meant that I couldn't come back to the United States. I mean, if you're ready to leave the United States, if you're so frustrated by what's going on here, then you should be prepared to not come back, I think. Right. And somebody in the chat room is saying that exit taxes last for 10 years after expatriation. It's ridiculous. I don't know if that's true or not. But uh, I don't know either, but it sounds outrageous. Nor do I. It sounds believable, though. But You don't know that, Daryl? That's surprising. <laughs> Something Daryl doesn't know. What? <laughs> but one, one thing that uh, would make it really difficult is just you know because you're leaving the U.S. and prepared to never come back to the U.S., if you want to, you know, like move to Portugal and then from Portugal, do you decide, you know what? I think I want to go to Andorra. Mm -hmm. Well, if the U.S. says your passport is no longer valid yeah. and you haven't gone through the processes in Portugal and most likely, you know, if you're not abiding by whatever exit requirements from the U.S., mm -hmm. Portugal's not going to give you anything, then you're stuck where you land. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah, I don't have a U.S. passport, so I'd have to try my world passport and see how far that got me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's such a thing as a world passport? Yes. Yes, there is. And uh, let's see, Daryl, how would you describe the world passport? The if I can find mine. world passport. And one thing that I don't like about the world passport is it considers you to be a world citizen. Mm. And even though there's not a world government, it still has that word citizen in it. But it's it's basically a document, and 
I would love to be able to come up with something similar without the whole World Service Authority thing attached to it. So it's issued by a, a group called the World Service Authority. It was started, I believe the man's name is Gary Davis, if I'm Sounds not, right. If I'm, if I'm recalling correctly. Started by this guy who was in the military in the United States in World War II, I believe. And then after he got out of the war, uh, he became very anti-war. And he uh, basically... I don't know what it was that, that motivated him to do this, but he created this world passport and essentially renounced using the United States to travel around the world using their passport. So he got he created this world passport for himself, and he's been using the world passport to travel ever since then. Yes. And it's an amazing Very story. Nice. Uh, really, to look into Gary Davis, I wanted to get him on the show a long time ago, and I, I reached out to the World Service Authority and just was one of those things that the ball was in their court, I think, and they never really got back to me. But if you look him up, there's a video of him crossing the Vermont border, which is pretty entertaining. Now, this guy's still alive, and he's in his 90s today, and he's like this... He's this, uh, you know, this character, right? This interesting old guy that, that lives in, I think... Uh, the very northern portion of Vermont, up yes. there, the the capital region of Vermont, and uh, there's so he's taken all of his life experiences and holds himself up in a a northern area in the mountains where hardly anybody will ever go visit him. I don't know, you know, he's old, so I mean, I don't know how much traveling he does these days, but he right. has traveled to many countries. I bet it would be really interesting to sit in a room with him for an hour. It would, and he's been arrested many times as well. He's spent time in jail in many countries while they figure out what the hell to do with this guy who's got this world passport. But obviously he's made it through. He's sitting in his house probably right now in, in Vermont. And and so when you watch the video of him crossing the Vermont border with the, the world passport, it's really cool. But at the same time, there's you get the uh, impression that the people that work at the border know Gary. And <laughs> yeah. So like, oh, here's Gary with they're, his... They're wary of him. Right, with his world passport. Here's old crazy Gary. Yeah. And so they just kind of wave him through, and it's it's totally fine for him. So it will be interesting, and I'd like to do it one of these days, whenever, maybe during Pork Fest or something like that, go up to the border and try to cross into Canada with a world passport just to see what happens. The problem is, though, yeah. I've got misdemeanor convictions, and Canada can be picky about uh, the things that they let you in for Ruh-roh. versus not. So that could be an issue, which means I might go up to the border and then get held in detention by Canada for a while before. <laughs> Take wh- somebody without felonies with you. Yeah. Yeah, and more than one vehicle, I think, too. Anyway, the World Passport's fascinating. We can talk more about that. And also, they're jacking the rates up on leaving the United States. We'll give you more of the details on how that works. Coming up, you can share your thoughts as well. If you own a business, you need customers, right? Well, your potential customers are listening to this radio program right now, and I can help you reach them. Hi, I'm Matt Brower, a national marketing executive at the radio network responsible for this program. I can help you customize a national radio campaign that fits your budget, large or small, while targeting your specific audience. Call me to learn how radio advertising can make your business more profitable. 877-996-4327, extension 128. That's 877-996-4327, extension 128. I I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. According to friends, colleagues, and complete strangers, anxiety-ridden man Timothy Gibula is rightly ashamed of every single thing he does, with mere acquaintances saying they're constantly judging Gibula at every moment, just as he suspects. Tim's the kind of guy who's forever second-guessing his behavior, as if everyone's constantly scrutinizing him, and he's completely correct. We all are. We can spend entire afternoons picking apart Tim's taste in clothing and his receding hairline. It's honestly all we do when he's not around. Anytime he uh, awkwardly says excuse me when 
when he's waiting in line for milk or sugar, uh, anytime he fails to make eye contact with me when he asks me for the Wi-Fi password. Not only do I notice these things, but I use them to judge him fundamentally as a human being. A three alarm fire that tore through a family home in Newark, Delaware early Saturday morning tragically claimed a half sleeve of Oreo cookies that were trapped inside a cupboard. At the time of the blaze, the residence was occupied by Mike and Sheila Donlan, their three young children, and six delicious chocolate sandwich cookies, all half dozen of which perished in the intense heat and towering flames. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink, providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. If you live in a free country, then shouldn't you be free to leave? Seems one of the most basic questions that one could ask. About Stop freedom. using logic, Ian. Apparently, you can't just walk away? No. No. In fact, uh, according to Forbes magazine, you have to prove five years of U.S. tax compliance just to get started on the process. We'll tell you about it here in a moment, what it actually takes to legally leave the United States to renounce citizenship, as it's called. Also, your thoughts certainly are welcome. Maybe you've gone through this process. Maybe you know how arduous or or simple. Maybe it's very easy. Um, as long as you lay some cash out and grease some bureaucrats' palms, fill out a few pieces of paper, no problem. Of course, usually it doesn't work that way. Of course, in a lot of cases, when you are paying bureaucrats, they do tend to act in a more efficient manner. At least that's mm -hmm. been what I've noticed here in New Hampshire. Like when I went to get my uh, legal name changed through the probate court, man, they were lickety split fast on scheduling that court date because I gave them $105. Yeah. So uh, back to the story here in a moment. I also want to let you know about My Magic Mud. I uh, just, in fact, used My Magic Mud last night, and it's so effective, actually, at whitening teeth. I have to say I was pretty amazed about it, and Mark is a huge coffee drinker, and he's just been raving about My Magic Mud. I use it definitely at least a couple times a week, and one of these jars will last for quite a while. I, as I understand it, 150 uses per $25 jar of this amazing tooth powder. It is not a toothpaste. It is a tooth powder. So you might want to use a little more caution when you're brushing because it's a little different. Uh, to, it's kind of a totally different experience, I guess. I shouldn't say a little different. Your mouth will be black, and it seems counterintuitive. How could you have whiter teeth after putting black stuff all over your mouth? Well, it's uh, apparently it, the, the powder is basically sort of a clay-based uh, powder and it's it's pretty amazing stuff. In fact, the ingredients are actually used as dietary supplements 
that uh, it's not only an effective whitener, it's also safe to swallow. It's a holistic remedy for your teeth that removes plaque and detoxifies the mouth of bacteria. The product gives you a dentist clean every time you use it and is gentle on the enamel. So uh, it actually is useful for promoting healthy gums and reversing sensitivity and even soothing pain. It's amazing stuff and created by Jessica Armon, a liberty-loving homeschool mother of three. Go and get your jar today at MyMagicMud.com, and you will probably see results after the first use. At least that was uh, Mark's experience. My girlfriend had a similar experience. Pretty cool stuff. So again, MyMagicMud.com. That's MyMagicMud.com. To leave America, according to Forbes, you've got to prove five years of U.S. tax compliance if you have a net worth greater than $2 million or average annual net income tax for the five previous years of $157,000 or more, that's tax, not income, then you pay an exit tax. It's a capital gain tax as if you sold your property when you left. At least there's an exemption of up to $680,000 for 2014. Long-term residents giving up a green card can be required to pay the tax as well. Now, the State Department interim rule just raised the fee for renunciation of U.S. citizenship from twenty-three, excuse me, from four hundred and fifty dollars. It is now two thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. Now, Daryl, you said that the exit tax is what the six hundred eighty thousand dollar limit is, meaning that you're exempt from the exit tax up to that amount of money. That is my understanding. But you would not be exempt from the two thousand three hundred and fifty dollar renunciation fee. No, my understanding is that if you're, uh, you know, exempt from that six hundred and eighty thousand, if your assets or whatever is below that, you are exempt from the exit fee. That two thousand no, no, no. dollar fee. Exit, no, that the exit tax is different from the fee, right? So, are you saying you'd be exempt from both the tax and the fee? I'll have to reread the stuff because. My understanding was there was one thing and they were just using the word tax and fee interchangeably. That doesn't make sense because think about it from this perspective, Daryl. If you're going to go and ask the government for something, which is what you're doing in the case of renouncing citizenship, they're not just going to tell you, oh, yeah, just fill out this paperwork and we'll see you later as long as you're under 680000 No, they're going to want a filing fee Okay, but that's that. uh, like I, I feel like it's ridiculous to say that you're asking the government for something. It's like you know having somebody in your house and saying, well, you can't. You can't go home until you pay me this fee. Like, are they going to be stuck in your house where you don't want them, and then they're going to take up more of your your uh well, you can like leave. your food and you can your leave space. without paying the fee, right? You can leave. It's just that you're right. asking and them to remove you from their books, essentially. No, to- you you can renounce your citizenship by as simply being in another country, mm-hmm. finding the American embassy in that country. Going to the front door and saying, here's my passport. I don't want it anymore. And you don't think they're going to charge you a fee for that? If you go to the State Department's website Mm -hmm. and look up how to renounce citizenship, it tells you, go to the consulate in the country you're in and give them your passport. There's going to be more to it than that. It says nothing about filling out forms. There's going to be there's going to be forms. They're going to sit you down for some kind of an interview I mean, this is not going to be you just walk in, hand over a passport, and call it a day. Come on, this is the federal government we're talking about here. That's That would be the beginning of the process, I imagine. But there's going to be a process. I'm sure it is. Yeah. But when you go to the page on the State Department website of how to renounce citizenship, mm-hmm. it says nothing about paying forms. Or filing forms. Well, the state, uh, according to the story here at Forbes, critics note it's more than 20 times the average level, this new price of $2,350. Uh, more than 20 times the average level in other high-income countries. The State Department says it's about demand on their services and all the extra workload that they have to process people who are on their way out. The notice says the following. Number one, consular officers must confirm that the potential renunciant fully understands the consequences of renunciation, including losing the right to reside in the United States without documentation as an alien. So there's one thing right there, Daryl, that they'll do as soon as you hand over your passport or whatever. They're going to make sure you understand what you're doing. Right, and you'll but probably why is, have to put your signature on a line to confirm that you understand that. Why is it a process or a service that you would just say, okay, I'm leaving, and then they're like, oh, wait, you can't leave yet. We've got to right. fill out all these forms first. Like, I, I, well, that's livestock, confusing to your me. Your inventory, like, and you need to be removed from the inventory. 
There's a process involved in this. Number two, consular officers must verify that the renunciant is a U.S. citizen, and they must conduct a minimum of two, here you go, intensive interviews with the potential renunciant. Consular officers must even review at least three consular systems before administering the oath of renunciation. Now, I would like There's to know. Oath too. Yes. Wow. I would like to know what that says. What is the oath of renunciation? We'll find that out here, maybe if we can. Number three, the final approval of the loss of nationality must be done within the Directorate of Overseas Citizen Services in Washington, D.C. After that, the case is returned to the consular officer overseas for final delivery of the certificate of loss of nationality to the renunciant. So, as you can see, this is a involved process. So I have found the oath slash affirmation of renunciation of nationality of United States. Almost done, almost done here with the process. Number four, these steps add to the time and labor being involved in the process. Accordingly, the department is increasing the fee for processing such requests. That's what I thought it was, a fee for all requests from $450 to $2,350. So there you go. Let's get into the, uh, the, the oath here. Okay, so the oath, it's a, you know, eight and a half by 11 form okay. that has the location of the embassy slash consulate, the country, and then it says, I print your name, a national of the United States, solemnly swear slash affirm that I was born at, and then you put the location, the uh, town, the county, the state, and the date that I formerly resided in the United States at, you put the address. That I am a national of the United States by virtue of... What the hell does that even mean? National is slightly different from citizen. Yeah. Uh, citizens, they say, have the uh, duty to protect attached to the allegiance that is mm -hmm. given. Nationals just have to give allegiance, and they get nothing in return. Interesting. Uh, I wonder why they're using that term. Well... I'm, I'm because, looking at the same page, and it says you're either born in the U.S. or naturalized. Right. So I believe it's Samoa. The people in American Samoa are nationals, but not citizens. Well, that's very interesting. We'll come back here in moments, and we'll finish the oath, too, right? Yes. There's more. The oath of renunciation. What does it say? We'll find out. This is Free Talk Live. You can share your thoughts. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair, pain-free, and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm-hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits no no and no no for a limited time you can try no no pro risk-free you'll also get the facial kit and a travel case get weeks of long-lasting results that's it i'm getting a no no great minds do think alike <laughs> <laughs> try no no pro risk-free by calling 800-952-5760 800-952-5760 that's 800-952-5760 800 
Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Freedomsphoenix.com, constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy, health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative freedomsphoenix.com constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways with liberty and property under constant attack freedomsphoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda and it encourages the participation of its readers go to freedomsphoenix.com that's freedoms with an s phoenix.com freedomsphoenix.com the revolution between the ears has already happened Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. Rats is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. Rats was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want. Just dial toll-free here to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features waiting for you on the site. If you like Free Talk Live and you want to help support uh, the show, support what we're doing here, then you can become an amplifier. Just go to amp.freetalklive.com to do that. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. Five bucks a month is what AMP costs. It makes a big difference to us when you do that because it allows us to invest money into promoting Free Talk Live to new radio stations. Uh, In fact, Daryl, you just got a new station signed today, so congratulations on that. We can't announce what station it is, but I think we could say Arizona, and that'll be about as far as we can go. And they will be joining on Monday. If all goes as planned, and sometimes it doesn't go as planned, that's why we always welcome our stations after we know when things are working correctly. But anyway, you can help us with getting more stations on board. We're over 165 today. Uh, You can do that by becoming an amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. We also uh, spend some of the money on doing internet advertising, so not just doing outreach to stations, but doing outreach directly to listeners online and also doing satellite uh, delivery of the show uh, via free-to-air in North and Central America, as well as a lot of Africa. And what I'd like to expand that in the future as well. So you can help us by going to AMP dot freetalklive.com sign up with any major credit card through paypal or use visa or mastercard right on our website it makes a huge difference for free talk live when you do that so thank you in advance and again that's amp.freetalklive.com we're talking about the oath of renunciation what brought us to this was reading a forbes piece about how the federal government in the united states is jacking the rates up by 422 percent from 450 dollars to $2,350. That is the fee to renounce one's renounce renounce rather renounce one's US citizenship. You would think it was renounce because, you know, renu- renunciation. Renunciation yeah. renounce, yeah. No, nope, uh, to renounce one's citizenship and there's a process involved in that where you've got to, you know, ask for permission first. They give you the forms, you fill them out. There's thousands of dollars you have to Pay them for it, and you have to go through intensive interviews, a minimum of two of them. I don't know what the purpose of those intensive interviews is, but uh, imagine that means they're asking all kinds of invasive questions uh, during the Probably those trying to find out if you're leaving for tax purposes? Mm, could be. 
So, and then there's a, an oath of renunciation that they want you to sign. And Daryl, you were reading said oath to us. Yes. So it starts off with, you know, like the basic stuff of where you are, what embassy, what country that's located in, your name, where you were born, when you were born, where you used to live in the United States. And then you mark a box saying, I am a national of the United States by virtue of either birth in the United States or abroad to U.S. parents or through naturalization. And then there's a date for naturalization and if naturalized, when, where. And here is the actual oath okay. that you are signing. It says, I desire and hereby make a formal renunciation of my U.S. nationality as provided by Section 349A5 of the Immigration and Nationality Acts of 1952 as amended and pursuant thereto. I hereby absolutely and entirely renounce my United States nationality together with all rights and privileges and all duties and allegiance and fidelity thereto pertaining. I make this renunciation intentionally, voluntarily, and of my own free will, free of any duress or undue influence. And then you sign and it is notarized. Okay. There you go. And it references a law here, section three, or actually a specific section of a law, section 349A5, and Ellen has pulled that up. Uh, I don't know. Is it technically a law, or is it, it, because it's the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1950, okay, so yeah, I guess it would be, it's just, yeah. I was scrolling down through this page, like, I have the entire act pulled up here, and it's just so freaking long. I don't know how people oh, yeah. read through this. And they just expect you to know it when filling out this form. But this one specific line that it mentions, does that have anything, you know, okay, of interest so, in it? So Section 349A5 says... Making a formal renunciation of nationality before a diplomatic or consular office of the United States in a foreign state in such form as may be prescribed by the Secretary of State. So, so basically saying you, this form saying, complies with this mm -hmm. section of law of how you renounce. Well, that's right. about enough law for one night. Uh, <laughs> thanks for that. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. So pony up, swear this oath. $2,350, go through several inter mul multiple interviews, and then maybe you'll be allowed to officially no longer have citizenship ties right. to the United and States. And you can't be within the jurisdiction of the United States when you when sign you do that this? form. Oh, interesting. Uh, there was a court case in 1998, this according to the State Department website, it says a person seeking to renounce U.S. citizenship must renounce all rights and privileges associated with such citizenship. In the case of Cologne v. U.S. Department of State, 1998, the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia rejected Cologne's petition for a writ of mandamus directing the Secretary of State to approve a certificate of loss of nationality in the case because he wanted to retain the right to live in the United States while claiming he was not a U.S. citizen. Oh, that makes sense. They don't even want to give you the chance to hang around after you've uh, renounced your nationality. Right, right. Like, even if you're like, no, I swear, I'm just, I'm leaving right after this. I, right. I promise, so, but so you've you been, can't even be there. You've for, had all your privileges, so, as right. they're called, stripped, and that includes the privilege of being able to stay here, right. apparently. So, so your statement of there's no such thing as a citizen, and while I agree with you as a matter of... You know, legal fact, mm -hmm. because of all the weird rulings that have been made, they don't see it that way. Well, of course not. Of it's course like not. It's like the spiteful ex-wife. Like, if if you want to sign those divorce papers, you can't be here anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to leave right now. Which, of course, you never actually agreed to any of this in the first place, right? I mean, if you were born within the United States boundaries, then they just presume that all this stuff applies to you. But I still think it would be interesting for somebody who is in, whether it's a tax case or something else, some other sort of criminal case or wherever, where there's no victim. And if you're accused of being a citizen by the government, because they think you're a citizen, right? But if they accuse you of being a citizen, then I would like to see the proof of it. If you're going to say in court that I'm a citizen, then please provide the evidence that that is true. Provide the evidence that anyone 
is a citizen. Not just me, but anyone at all. Now, you might be able to provide evidence that someone who actually swore to be a citizen, as in an immigrant, because they actually did you know, raise their right hand and swear some sort of an oath of citizenship. But right. even then, well, they're still not getting protected. They're not getting the return protection that's right, promised. But most likely, all they'll have to do is go through your you know, list of driver's mm-hmm. license applications or your you know, voter registration forms and say, well, you checked the box. You filled out the forms. Mm-hmm. You that checked means the box that said consent. you're a citizen. Which Therefore, I couldn't, which I couldn't uh, fill out the form without checking the box, right? So there wasn't any option to not check the box. So right. Therefore, well, I was under duress. you had an option to not do it. You could have just given up <laughs> yeah. all of these wonderful That's things right. that you have in life. Yeah, you could have not driven anywhere ever again in your entire life. Yeah. Basically. Right. It really, you know, it depends on how principled you like. If you live by complete principle, that's just not functional at all. Yeah. If you, you live by to- complete 100% principle, you will not interact with anybody ever. It's true. Because somebody drove on a road, somebody used electricity from the electricity grid, somebody did something. When you say by principle, you mean in an attempt to avoid all taxes and regulations? Yes. yes. I see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's impossible. They got gotcha. you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Still, even though I have definitely checked these boxes, uh, I would argue that I did them under duress or that, uh, that you know. You did it to keep the things that you enjoy in life. That like, that's the whole purpose of having freedom. That they still have to prove that I'm a citizen if they're going right. to. I mean, look, citizen has a specific definition. Just because I checked the box on the paper doesn't mean that that definition is actually applied to that word. Meaning right. that the government has ruled that there is no obligation to protect you at the Supreme Court level. So how could there be a citizen? It, that that right there just nullifies the agreement as far as I'm concerned. So I think it's just a big scam. The whole idea of citizen is essentially a cover for really what we are, which is serfs. I mean, we're just serfs. Right. We, uh, you know, we pay up a portion of our land to these bureaucrats, a portion of our income to these bureaucrats who will put us in a cage if we don't do it. Yeah, you know how you were talking about having the uh, the world passport earlier. I yes, I, do I, f- have the world I feel passport. like in like a hundred years that's going to take on a much different meaning. Like, there'll there'll be different civilizations on different planets, and your oh. world passport will be like you live in the corporate United. You're an Earth again. Yeah. Uh, you think a hundred years for that? Uh, one or two. All right, we'll come back with more here in moments. Eight fifty five, four fifty free. That's the toll free number. You can take control of the airwaves. Coming up. Let's talk about aliens, Ellen. You've got a story about that. It's Free Talk Live, hour two on the way. Hi, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. The internet has lowered the cost barrier for a worldwide radio show to a price approaching zero. Yet there is one arena where you still need thousands of dollars to approach the audio quality of the corporate media. Doing a live spoken show with more than one host in different geographic locations. Our program, Fiend Phone, will solve that problem and it will be given away free. Go to fiendphone.com to see what you can do to help. That's F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E dot com. The Lumber Liquidators Fall Flooring Kickoff Sale is on with over 250 of the latest styles all on sale now. Get Black Forest Oak Laminate for a crazy 39 cents a square foot. Beautiful and durable bamboo for just $159. Classic pre-finished gunstock oak hardwood for $149. All gorgeous Bella Wood pre-finished hardwood is on sale. Plus get special 24-month financing. Go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Hurry, this sale ends Tuesday the 2nd. The fall flooring season is here. Why aren't you? If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. 
You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, August 29th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.55 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,286 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $506. Antiwar.com reports, in a speech yesterday afternoon, President Obama talked up the Iraq war in the broadest terms possible, praising the bravery of pilots launching airstrikes in the country, and again taking credit for saving those folks on the mountain, presumably referring to the large mythical Yazidi calamity that was the initial pretext for the conflict. At the same time, he denied any existing plan to expand the war into Syria, and indeed claimed we don't have a strategy at all in place for any part of the war yet, saying that asking Congress for permission for the war right now would be putting the cart before the horse until he figures out how big of a war it will be. The White House later clarified that that was no military strategy. Having no strategy at all would certainly explain a few things about the haphazard escalation of the conflict, as well as its apparent open-endedness. President Obama said Secretary of State John Kerry is being sent abroad to build a coalition for the war because apparently other nations might want to get in on this strategy-free, heedless war. Underscoring just how little clarity the administration is willing to offer on the war, President Obama conceded that the war will cost some money, without saying exactly how many billions of dollars per year we're talking. Talking. That, along with where the money is going to come from, likewise seems to be getting punted down the road until the war is escalated to a level he's comfortable with. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. The AP reports, Utah's governor says the state should appeal a court ruling that struck down key parts of a law criminalizing polygamy there. Utah Governor Gary Herbert said that state laws should be defended in court until all appeals are exhausted. For now, it appears to be legal in Utah for people to legally marry one person and live with others they consider to be spouses, though that practice was illegal until a judge's ruling that was finalized on Wednesday. Police and prosecutors in Utah have long declined to criminally charge consenting adults in plural marriages. That lack of enforcement may have influenced U.S. District Judge Clark Wadoop's decision, but Herbert said that the law should stay on the books. A federal judge on Wednesday finalized a ruling in favor of the TLC reality TV star Cody Brown and his four wives, deciding that the law forbidding cohabitation violates their right to religious freedom. Utah's bigamy law made it illegal to even purport to be married to multiple partners or live together. Most bigamy laws only prohibit people from having multiple legal marriage licenses. The judge left in place that portion of Utah's bigamy law. The practice of polygamy is a legacy of the early teachings of the Mormon Church. The mainstream Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints abandoned polygamy in 1890 as Utah moved towards U.S. statehood. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. Reuters reports support for Scottish independence has risen by four percentage points after the final TV debate before a breakaway referendum in less than three weeks' time. One opinion poll showed on Friday having the anti-independence campaign's lead. Alex Salmond, the leader of the pro-independence Scottish National Party, was widely judged to have gotten the better of Alistair Darling, the head of the anti-independence Better Together campaign, in the TV debate on August 5th. 
In the first survey since the debate, the Scottish Daily Mail published the results of a poll on Friday showing support for the pro-independent side had risen to 47% from 43% since a similar poll was released on August 9th after the first TV debate. Support for the anti-independence camp had fallen to 53%. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. On June 4th, 1919, a group of bold, passionate men took it upon themselves to pass the Women's Suffrage Act, finally granting women the right to vote that they were too frail and helpless to achieve on their own. Having long watched women struggle to stand up for their right to choose elected officials, the strong and capable men decided to intercede and aid their weak female counterparts. And on June 6, 1972, David Bowie's release of his concept album, The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust, kickstarted the glam rock genre and led to such spin off trends as glam medicine, glam sports, and glam architecture, all culminating in the 1976 presidential glam election. And that was what happened this week in history. In the words of French King John II, history will forever remember the great names of Alexander and Napoleon and Washington. But what about me, John II of France? I did stuff too. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. One guy over at the New York Post is really upset about Bitcoin. We can explain or share his uh, claims and his article here in a little bit. We get a chance. Your calls are welcome at 855-450-FREE. Plus, Ellen is going to tell us about aliens. Uh, Glenn, though, first, listening in Alabama. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Ellen, and Daryl. Hi, I want to change up just a little bit here. Yes, sir. A lot of people, a lot of people that are going, that are leaving the United States, don't have a hundred million dollars that they made at Microsoft or Facebook. That's right. They're um, they're going in. They want to vanish on five hundred dollars a month, and you can do it. But once you get in the country, you, uh, for instance, Thailand, you go in on a thirty day visa. On day 31, you're illegal. Mm -hmm. What happens if you want to uh, take the antiques that you inherited? You need a home. You can't own land there, but you can lease it. You can buy a condo. Okay. Um, the best thing you can do is as soon as you get into the country, get yourself a good attorney, a great attorney. It's the difference between a good attorney and a great attorney. A good attorney knows the law. A great attorney knows the judge. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. Now, wait a minute. Where are you getting this expertise uh, from? You're calling from Alabama. So, I mean, how do you know so much about this? I'm one of your advertisers. Uh -huh. They run like other guys. Excellent. Excellent. So then uh, so it's fair to say you have some experience with this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Instead of going into someplace like Thailand on a 30-day visa, you go into Cambodia or Laos, you're, they hand you the 30-day visa, tell them, no, you want the normal visa. They're going to shrug their shoulders, and they're going to hand you a normal visa. What's that get That's you? Good one, one year. Sweet. <laughs> you got to know the system. If, Work the system. There if, you go. You're on, if you're on the 30-day visa, you're going to be doing what all the expats over there are doing. It's called the visa run. So leave the country every 30, 45 days, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and go pick up a new visa stamp. If you're on that normal visa, you can set yourself up close to the Thai border. Um, I, I, I've got a, a section in there on Vanish on 500 a month, also one on job strategy. Um, because you're a lot of us would need to work once we get over there. Wait a minute, you're saying and, the uh, you've got a section in where on Asia Run Like Hell com? Yeah. Okay, so there's so there's more to that than just getting surgery around the world. Then that's uh, that's interesting. Oh, I go in. Yeah, I, I, I go into a good bit of stuff on there. It's uh, it's it, it's under the heading of other. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I see that up there. And thanks for the heads up on that, Glenn. What else did you want to focus on tonight? Uh... <laughs> 
one of the one of the, the best ways if you're a single girl or single guy go over and get married now that can be fraught with with a lot of troubles it can be fraught with um yeah what if you don't get along uh, with the person you marry how are you going to understand them <laughs> well now that that that's another thing you know the you're you're dealing with some very educated cosmopolitan people. Yeah, there's a lot of English uh, speakers around the world. English is a fairly popular and, second language. And you're dealing with some people who have the the ability to make a lot more money than a lot of us do. Um, <laughs> so so you bring to this relationship the being American, and you don't have to give up citizenship. You don't have to give up your passport. Um, if indeed you're you're going over to avoid taxes, then yeah, you have to do that. But you know, let's face it, most of us aren't going over there to deal to give up with taxes. We're escaping a police state. Well, I don't want the hell with that. I don't want to pay taxes either. I mean, so you know, if I were to uh, to go over there, then how would the IRS know anything? I mean, I haven't paid them in a decade, and I I live here. So I mean, how would they know word one about what I'm doing over there? What I mean, it seem would seem to me the only way the IRS would know what you're doing in another country is if you told them about it. Well, you'd have to have a passport. Well, you'd have to use your passport to get there. Sure, but that doesn't yeah, mean they know where you are. But, Sorry, but, go ahead, Glenn. But norm, uh, normally, people have to open up a bank account, and that's where those factor requirements come in. Now, uh, you guys know a lot more about Bitcoin right. than anybody else. Yeah, and that's a game Kong, changer. That's a game changer. Hong Kong has uh, one big bank there that names escape me have just uh, established – this Bitcoin relationship, and it no was way. Wait, 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 wait! You're saying there's a bank in Hong Kong that's that's accepting Bitcoin? Big one, yeah. Wow, I'm gonna definitely yeah. look into that, Glenn. Thanks for the heads up tonight. Thanks for the call. That's uh, that's Glenn from AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com. Knows a thing or two about this. And uh, Glenn, can people reach out directly to you through the through the site? Of course, I can. Awesome. I check the email daily, uh, hourly. Thanks for the info tonight, man. I appreciate the call. You are welcome to comment as well. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Talking about the idea of leaving the United States, uh, renouncing citizenship. And uh, so what he was pointing out there is the FACTA. This is the requirement that it's some sort of IRS thing, I think. Anyway, the idea is that you have to keep paying income tax even though you don't live in the United States, even though you don't uh, you know, benefit from the supposed ben- uh, the bennies or the perks anymore of living in the United States. You still have to keep paying the IRS, at least until you go through the renunciation of citizenship. That's I, As I understand it, I'm not an attorney. That's what I've gotten from the discussion thus far and previous knowledge of this issue. But if you don't ever set up a bank account in the foreign country, then you wouldn't have to comply with the factor requirements. And so, therefore, if you could use Bitcoin and the various different neat Bitcoin services out there like Gift.com or whatever the European equivalent of that might be, then uh, then that would allow you to operate in, in a lot of ways completely under the radar when you're moving. And if you also think about it, there's that rule. We haven't mentioned this. The rule that if you try to leave the United States with more than $10,000 – that it'll basically get confiscated from you. And so if you're going to leave the United States, Bitcoin's a great way. If you're going to leave any country, you don't want to go through the border checkpoint with $20,000 in cash. Yeah, that's right. true. I'm, I I think that would be the biggest concern for people trying to leave the U.S. is how much they have in assets. And if you can liquidate that all and put it in some account that nobody can trace or that nobody can get to anyway, then that prob- that will solve most of your problems. Right, they wouldn't even know you had it. You'd want enough cash to just do the traveling that you need to do, have that much cash on you, but the rest you keep in Bitcoin. And if you don't have a Bitcoin wallet on your phone at that time, like what I would recommend would not be having any info on your phone, because what we found out recently was that at border checkpoints, it's not uncommon for them to take your phone from you, have you put in your passcode, and then have them paw around through your phone's uh, information. So the best thing to do in that case, in my opinion, is to uninstall all the various programs from your phone that have identifying information in them. Take out your email, you know, take out your Google account from the phone, so when you go into the email, it's just blank, there's nothing in there. 
uh, that and you know kind of decustomize your phone before you cross the border. That My way- understanding on the electronics thing was that they just wanted to make sure that the electronics actually turned on. Oh, really? And weren't explosives. I don't know. I heard they went through a couple things on uh, some folks' phones who went through the border. Which border? Uh, U.S. Canadian. I also, believe. does does it matter if you're like detained and pulled to the side in the back room, or if you're just passing through? Like, I don't. I don't think they would go to that extreme, would they? Searching I don't know. through your phone. If you, you never know. Just, they might not look. They might not like the way you look. There's differences get- between. You know, airline travel, traveling on a train, traveling via car, Mm -hmm. you know, like no two border crossings are going to be exactly the same. So, you know, if somebody is driving across the border, they might have one experience. Sure. The TSA, you know, that's what I thought you were talking about was getting on an airplane no, to no. fly to Asia, not driving to Canada. No, I forget who it was that had the experience, but somebody, I think somebody called in recently with with that experience at the border. Toll free number is 855-450 free. Speaking of borders, we'll be talking about aliens, but not the... Uh, the typical aliens that you hear talked about on talk radio. This is the space alien type, and Ellen's got some interesting news about that. We'll share that with you in moments. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733, plus a Bitcoin hater coming up. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on Liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at Liberty.me. I love being a member of Liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want right here toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Oh, there's so much to talk about in the news. Don't know hardly which way to go. There's interesting uh, co- a story about Bitcoin. I just came across another story uh, over in New Jersey where they are cracking down on Uber uh, one of the ride-sharing services. We can update you on their travails here in a little bit. And our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Hey, if you need focus and are feeling fatigued, trying to get the extra edge when it counts, look into modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall, so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are also talking about modafinil from modup.net and how it's making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge that they need. And over at modup.net, they provide the highest premium quality modafinil with the best potency so you enjoy significant results. And that's why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. Now remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and ModUp.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. So visit ModUp.net, and if you pay with Bitcoin, you'll get a 33% discount. Now to make the deal even better, use code FTL to get 10 free tablets with your order. So again, code FTL at ModUp.net for great service at a great price on Modafinil. That's M-O-D-U-P, ModUp.net. Use code FTL for the the bonus. So we've been talking about immigration, not necessarily immigration, but uh, emigration, I guess. Emigration with an E, that is to leave the place uh, where you are currently living and go somewhere else and renouncing citizenship. If you've ever been through this process, we would love to hear from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Now, Ellen, we said you were going to tell us about aliens, the kind from space. Aliens. Woo! Everybody loves Great movie. One of my yeah. favorites. <laughs> the, oh, yeah. The great imagery with the alien come out of the stomach. Mm, yes. I don't think I ever saw it. No? no? Really? Did you yeah. ever see Prometheus? No, that's a new, that's never like saw a, it. That came out more recently. That's that was a, prequel like a prequel to yeah. the original Alien film, which came out in 1979. I'm a huge, huge fan. I thought yeah. Prometheus was one of those about like ancient Greek mythology. Yeah, Prometheus was, uh, he was the man that stole fire from the gods and brought yes. it down to humans. But no, uh, the more recent movie was actually about the origins of life on Earth. And, uh, in part. Yeah, and... Basically, uh, the in a sci-fi weird sort of way. alien man thing that brought life to Earth. <laughs> he was like the Prometheus because he he basically like came to Earth and died, and his cells went into the water, and then life sprung from him. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Are you talking about the Church of Scientology, or are you talking about a movie? <laughs> the movie. The it's movie may have science adopted fiction. Some ideas. Yeah, I'm sure they stole a lot from and, Scientology. And the part she's describing is like the first two minutes of the movie, mm-hmm. so she hasn't really spoiled anything at all no. uh, in in the film. And I, it was actually pretty good. The Prometheus film was directed by the same guy who directed the original Alien, Ridley Scott, and uh, so it was kind of fun to have him come back around to the original material thirty something years later. 
pretty right. good stuff. If you like science fiction, if you like horror, then the Alien series is a fairly decent one. Right, and the whole the whole concept behind it is really brilliant. I think they got it spot on. It just is irritating when all of the supporting actors just make the dumbest decisions ever. Like, Are you talking about Prometheus still? Yes. Okay. I I mean like if hold if you on. find like going the, down into the dark tunnel all by themselves, if you find a, a snake thing that kills your friend, you're not gonna go and pick it up again. Yeah. Is it that the Actors made dumb decisions, or the characters the supporting characters. were written to make dumb decisions? Yes. Okay. The, basically, they had to make stupid decisions to push the storyline on. Yeah. But still, I, I like the movie solely for its, you know, the whole idea behind it, that life may have originated someplace else. And that's kind of what this article is about. Uh, so what's going on out there? So this article is from Mike.com. And the title is, Astronauts Just Found Life in Outer Space. As in and, MIC, like a microphone? Yes, okay. MIC.com. Scientists aren't sure how it got there, so there's this whole mystery behind it. The news. Russian cosmonauts have discovered something remar- remarkable clinging to the outside of the International Space Station, living organisms. The microscopic creatures appeared during a spacewalk intended to clean the vessel surface and were allegedly identified, incredibly, as a type of sea plankton. Hmm. This is big. According to Sploid, Russian scientists are both shocked by the discovery and can't really explain how it's possible. Results of the experiment are absolutely unique, Russian ISS Orbital Mission Chief Vladimir Soloyev Solovyev told <laughs> Good try. The, <laughs> that sounds close. Solovyev, I think that's how you say it. <laughs> told the I T A R T A S S news agency. That's one of the state run news agencies in Russia. Okay, so it's like controlled by Putin and has many biases and is paid to say certain things. Uh yeah, pretty much. Hmm. RT is also pay, uh, created by the Russian government as well, as well as Voice of Russia. Right, and RT, if you notice, they don't really speak bad about Putin. Mother Russia. Yeah. <laughs> nope. right. they, they will tell you the truth about what's going on in other countries. That's right. Yep. But they don't tell you what's really happening in Russia. No, well, I this have didn't seen... technically happen in Russia. It was <laughs> 200 miles above the Earth. Right. So, How do you notice microscopic organisms on the outside of your spaceship? Well, it probably looked like just some like soap scum or there. something. They oh, yeah. our windows are dirty. Uh, right. It just it probably must have like hit a, a film bug. Of coal like, or something. So they've got some sort of living bacteria. Was it? What? What was it exactly? Sea plankton. Yes, yeah, sea, sea plankton. plankton. So the stuff that whales eat. <laughs> okay. Uh, they eat krill, don't they? Sea plankton and plankton. Plankton are like microscopic organisms. I I mean, if if you're any living organism in the ocean, you're probably eating plankton without even knowing it. Mm. So Vladimir says quite obviously, this should be studied further in his dense Russian accent. Yeah, don't say. <laughs> life in space. Well, not exactly alien life forms. Experts are having trouble explaining how the plankton ended up on the station and survived possibly even grew and multiplied 205 miles above Earth's surface. Some claim they were carried there from ocean, from the ocean by uplifting air currents. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, so I'm no scientist, clearly. Um, I mean, I, I, I enjoyed science class when I was in school, but I never really, you know, went anywhere with, with that. But I, I remember learning about the, you know, when you go out from the, the planet out into space or back from space onto the planet, there's like... A lot of heat that's generated from something. When you're coming what. in, it well, generates a lot of heat. So there's no heat going out. There's well, not. Well, no. There's there's separate layers to the atmosphere. Yeah. Like there's the stratosphere and the ionosphere, and and there are certain areas that are warmer than at the surface, mm-hmm. but it's not an extreme amount. It's maybe like a few degrees warmer, but it does get much colder as you go out. Although I would say that sea plankton are such simple organisms that. You know, they could they easily could just those temperatures. They, they could basically go into like hibernation. Mm-hmm. And you know. the heat from the way I understand it, and I could be totally wrong, yeah. but I had always been told that the heat was more the friction of the metal crossing through all those of those different. layers huh. very rapidly. So therefore coming in more likely to be hotter than yes. going right. out. All right. 
Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I, for one, welcome our new alien overlords. This is Free Talk Live. <laughs> Healthy elimination is essential to high energy, a cheerful mood, and prevention of disease. Some of the founders of our modern holistic health thinking state that disease begins in a toxic colon. A toxic intestinal tract is the foundation for virtually all degenerative disease, and a clean and well-moving intestinal tract is the foundation of health. I just want to say that you folks have an amazing product. I've taken whey protein products for years, and I've never noticed results I have with your product. I've suffered with thoughts of constipation most of my life. Within a few days of taking One World Whey, I know a dramatic change. Also, in the past few years, I've experienced symptoms associated with diabetes. I feel horrible when I've had too much sugar, and I've been getting the foot pain as well. But I've noticed in the past week or so, I'm not feeling bad anymore, and the foot pain is gone. I'm just finishing up a five-pound tub I ordered and just got off the phone ordering more. I love your product. Thank you. Call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325. Or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorld, W-H-E-Y.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you're going to explain? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot reach Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait a minute. Now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want. All you have to do is dial in toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just go 
to freetalklive.com and do enjoy the features you'll find on the site. Free Talk Live is brought to you by ProXPN. If you care about your online privacy, check out ProXPN. They are a virtual private network that's global, and they've got servers around the world. And in fact, if you sign up for their premium account, you can access all of those servers. Uh, but you can get started for free, and you get one server on their free account with limited bandwidth at proxpn.com slash FTL. But why would you want to do that? What's the benefit of being on a virtual private network? Well, the number one uh, benefit is that it protects you from snooping on the part of the internet service provider that you use. Or maybe the local coffee shop wants to know what you're up to. Maybe somebody sitting in the coffee shop is trying to sniff out your packets from your computer, maybe to steal your credit card information or bank account info. That's all possible, but if you encrypt your connection, it makes it a lot more difficult, like nearing impossible. So you can go to proxpn.com slash FTL, grab their software for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, or Android devices, and that encrypts your data connection. So again, the ISP you're using won't be able to log what you're doing anymore, which they're probably doing right now, logging all the websites you visit, all the search terms that you enter for, in some cases, as long as five years. So go and get started at proxpn.com slash FTL. And when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account for access to the full uh, range of all the servers around the world, the ability to privately torrent, unlimited bandwidth, and you can get past regionally blocked websites, you can do it all for just 5 bucks a month with our discount code. The code is FTL50, that's FTL like Free Talk Live, and then the number 50, like 50% off, which is the price you're getting, 50% off the annual account. And if you want to save even more, pay with Bitcoin and use this code, FTLBTC. And you'll get 62% off the price of that annual account at proxpn.com slash FTL. Again, code FTL50 or FTLBTC. Great discounts on privacy that is priceless. And by the way, ProXPN has got a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. That's proxpn.com slash FTL. So we are talking about aliens. Ellen is with us here. Apparently, C. Plankton has been found on the outside of the International Space Station. Right. Is that correct? Yes. So so technically, they're not really alien, per se, because they are from our home planet. Mm. But, we think. Well, nobody's really sure where life originated. So, you know, who's to say what's alien and Good what's point. not? Yeah. So back back to where we are. So they're trying to figure out where they came from, yeah. how they got mm. on the outside of the, the, the station. Well, right. I... I think I might have figured out how the tardigrades got there. Well, what are the we haven't what are even gotten yeah, we, to that yet. Okay, so let's... tardigrades are these, I think they're cute little microscopic they're little things. They're a little things. terrifying looking. They're called water bears. Inflated bags with eight legs and yeah, a they... vacuum for a mouth. That's what they look like. Yeah, so imagine like a sumo suit with eight legs and not really much of a head, but microscopic and cute. Imagine like a really, it would really be a fat tardigrade. pink pig with eight legs. That's what it it's looks like. It's amazing, uh, these tardigrades. But wait, wait, wait. Before we get into the tardigrade thing, these things are also on the outside of the space station or what? What's going on No, No, uh, well, tardigrades are uh, the only other life form known to be able to survive in the uh, sub-zero vacuum conditions oh. of space. Oh, I thought I heard you say that tardigrades were also found on the spaceship. No, no. no. Okay. So let's get it. Let's. We can talk about a tardigrade here because I'd never heard of this before and it's crazy. Uh, but let's finish up this, the space station story. So the only thing okay. on the outside of the space station that we know of at least is microscopic microscopic sea plankton. Yep, that's what they found. And they weren't presumably weren't uh, launching from the sea. When they launched this... They were in Kazakhstan. Yeah. yeah. Some claim they were carried there from the ocean by uplifting air currents, according to Sploid. The mirror reports the plankton are atypical for Baikanur, Kazakhstan, where the station initially launched, meaning it's unlikely they were on its hull before it took off. Hmm. So they got there somehow, but not from, you know, somebody like smearing it on the outside of the the uh, rocket before it took off. Not only did they get there somehow, but they survived there in yeah, the middle and, of space. Yeah, and thrived apparently, which is like, what are they feeding on is my question. <laughs> I have no idea. What do plankton eat? Uh, Things very small, I minerals? would imagine. Uh, yeah. Maybe, well, maybe if they have, uh, you know, maybe they can photosynthesize. From the sunlight. Possibly. Yeah. Hmm. It Well, I guess it depends on what kind of plankton they are. 
Anyway, Spoid's Jesus Diaz goes a step further. He suggests their appearance lends credence to the theory that organic life may have spread across space, traveling on mm. comets and asteroids, and literally just falling into the uh, onto a planet or something. Well, well, I don't think anybody or anything could survive on an asteroid coming in mm -hmm. through. You know, because when you see them coming into the atmosphere, they're basically burning up. Right. Like something coming in that's extremely large could end up being pebble sized by the time it hits the ground. And that's just from the, the combustion, from all the friction and compression that it's going through. Hmm. So, uh, well... I, I'm glad we have someone smart on this show. Thank <laughs> you, Ellen, for coming in tonight. I know you're not oh. feeling well. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. I just, I don't know. I find it interesting. I think, you know, it's possible that life could have come in somehow from space, but probably not on a comet or asteroid. Hmm. You know, uh, some slower Alien means... Alien spaceship. Like, like floating. Well... Kind of like what the plankton did. Basically, the water from the ocean evaporated and kind of like carried up through the the layers of the atmosphere on it's the wind. Unbelievable, and, isn't it? Yeah, yes. I know. It's it's pretty impressive that you know even that they could survive that far. Anyway, this is much less far fetched than it seems. In 2012, Motherboard aired a documentary short about tardigrades, minuscule eight legged. Now, these are the other creatures. things. So so we know the sea plankton can survive in the vacuum of space. Right. This was and just discovered, but this has been known since 2012. Right. So Actually, since 07. So okay. They, they did the test in 07. So it was known before 2012. Yes. That's when they made the documentary. So now there's this tardigrades that we're going to find out about here that are absolutely crazy looking. I think they're cute. They can withstand extreme conditions, including the vacuum of space. So what is a tardigrade? Um. Well, I always thought... They were called water bears. I used to watch this show called The Most Extreme, and uh, it would it would always display it would have like a competition, like a list of ten through one of animals that were like able to survive in all of these conditions. And the tardigrade was able to, you know, whenever it wanted to, if the conditions weren't good enough, it would just roll up in a ball and hibernate. And it could do this for hundreds of years at a time. Wow. Yeah, it, it's pretty impressive. And this thing has eight legs on it. Yes. How many legs in the animal kingdom? I mean, usually no more than four, right? Yeah, I mean, no. I thought eight, eight legs was restricted for things like like, like sea creatures and, and and arachnids. Yeah. Well, I guess this is a sea creature technically. Right. right. Uh, vertebrates, mm -hmm. meaning things with a backbone, are limited to four legs. Okay. This has no. Right. This bone. is not a vertebrate. This no. is an invertebrate, and. The centipedes and millipedes, they have hundreds of legs. Good point. Touted as the first animal to survive in space, this hardy microorganism boasts limbs, a mouth, a digestive tract, and muscles, and a nervous wow. system. So it's it's highly complex. Everything except for a vertebrae. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> Which you don't really need one of those. To, like, so, there's so a wait, lot of... Go through that again. Limbs, what? Limbs, what a mouth, a digestive tract, muscles, and a nervous system. Huh. But no brain. <laughs> well, so you we don't know if it has a brain. There's on instinct. Some animals, like uh, sea slugs and octopus, they don't have brains either. Mm -hmm. And yet, but octopi are very intelligent. Right, and uh, That's I don't interesting. think starfish don't have brains either. You didn't know that octopus was an intelligent creature. Um, uh, nope. Highly intelligent. They can they can uh, manipulate things. They can open jars. They can find their way through tiny tiny holes. So that that's fascinating. What I didn't know is that they didn't. I didn't know. Certainly didn't know they had a brain, or they did not have a brain. Rather, no. They they use uh, just a nervous system, just a basic nervous system. They don't need a brain. Well, it makes to you wonder what the purpose of the brain is. I mean, if you can have intelligence without a brain. Well, it's. It's more concentrated, so it's better than having it all spread out. We'll come back with more here in moments. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And more about the tardigrade or water bear coming up. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping 
helping make a difference in the world. And one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is. We're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience. All you do is cover shipping. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Buzzbox Coffee is organic, so it contains no pesticides or toxins. It's shade grown, so less acidity and no heartburn. It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. If you need to say happy birthday, happy anniversary, thank you, or simply I'm thinking of you, proflowers.com is the key. Proflowers has stunning bouquets like the best-selling 100 blooms for $19.99. Plus, Proflowers will include a glass vase for free. Sending someone a wonderful surprise of beautiful flowers sent fresh from the field is easy. Choose the bouquet you like, pick the delivery date, and each order is 100% guaranteed. Plus, all bouquets from Pro Flowers are guaranteed to last at least seven full days. Beautiful, fragrant flowers picked fresh and sent to your loved one for lasting enjoyment. To get this incredible savings and send someone 100 gorgeous blooms with a free vase for $19.99, Go to proflowers.com, click the blue microphone in the top right corner, and enter code PLOW. That's proflowers.com. Click the mic and enter code P-L-O-W. If you're looking for work, you know the math. There are many more applicants than openings, so you need to stand out, not blend into the blah, blah, blah your interviewer is hearing from your competition. Here's a tip. In your interview, you will be judged more by the questions you ask than the answers you give. Yes, do anticipate the obvious job interview questions and prepare concise, insightful, glass half full sounding responses. And you should interview your interviewer. Seem genuinely curious about what will help get results. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. You want to cut through the clutter. For more tips for job job seekers, and making all the other conversations you have more productive, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want. Learn something new every night here on Free Talk Live, or at least I do. The tardigrade. You can find out more about that. What is it? It is uh, some sort of a thing. And it's very small and apparently has survived a lot longer than anyone else on this planet uh, and through some really amazing conditions. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, and you can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features you're going to find there on the site. They are totally free, unlike those other talk show hosts who want to charge you for their sites. Go to freetalklive.com. Something else you can do is uh, if you love freedom and you want to see an end to the insane war on drugs. There are a few people who are out there on the front lines of that uh, that war on drugs. In this case, it's a war against people. It's a war against our friends and our family members and our loved ones and our neighbors and coworkers. And it's a war on those people by the government guys, so the, by the governments of uh, the world, the governments of the United States and the states. And it needs to end. And uh, Drew's Defense.org, Drew, uh, Andrew Jones, is uh, one of the 
three or four people that have been arrested and charged with running the Silk Road underground marketplace in 2013 and prior to that. The Silk Road was shut down by the FBI, and Drew was one of the people arrested and charged with various different so-called crimes that have no victim, like money laundering, conspiracy, conspiracy to commit computer hacking, and conspiracy to sell narcotics. He's facing life in prison, and he's probably no older than his early 20s. I've met Drew in person. He's a Free State Project participant, and uh, hopefully he'll be able to move up here someday after he's victorious in court. But in order for him to have a chance at beating these charges, he's going to need legal representation. He has it, but his parents can't afford to pay for it all. They had to put up their house and their retirement incomes to get him out on bond. So he's, unlike Ross Ulbricht, the guy, one of the other guys accused of running the Silk Road, Ross is not out on bond. He's sitting in a prison cell, but Drew is out on bond at the moment, and he needs help uh, with paying for the legal bills. So go to drewsdefense.org if you want to help him out, uh, drewsdefense.org. You can also help out Ross over at Free Ross. Dot, I think it's dot .org, freeross.org, dot .com. I'm forgetting right now. Freeross. one of those things. I, I believe that both go to the website. Probably true. Anyway, drewsdefense.org, and I think it is freeross.com for Ross Ulbrick. So uh, let's continue here. The tardigrade. So, Ian, before we oh, there's continue a correction. about we have to make that, a correction. I want to correct something, and right. uh, this is what you get for believing the things that we say on Free Talk Live. You, you said Don't that listen to us. Uh, you did not think that octopi had brains. No, I thought you said that. Well, no, I said that. Originally. I said they do. Oh, okay. So okay. what I meant to say was I jellyfish did not mean. Okay, so octopi do have brains. Yes, it's jellyfish so, that do not. I, I did a uh, Google search, and it took me to the Wikipedia's about invertebrates and it says that two groups of invertebrates that being animals without a uh, skeleton mm -hmm. system uh, two groups have notably complex brains anthropods which would be insects crustaceans arachnids and a few others and cephalopods being octopi squids and other mollusks okay have uh, fairly complex brains and the uh, octopus and squid have the largest brains of any invertebrate. So completely opposite of what was being discussed in the last segment, which was Ellen saying she thought the octopus had no brain, but yet was intelligent. Turns out they do have a brain, probably the most yes. advanced brain of the right. invertebrates. Right. So what what led me to think that was because I, I was talking about how starfish didn't have a brain, and um, basically in them, it's spread out in each one of their arms. Like mm, they okay. each have, uh, it, it's more like a, a nervous system. Like uh, if you chop off an arm of a starfish, it'll regrow into Sweet. another animal. And I, I guess wait, that's- wait, wait, the whole arm will grow? So the, the, so the chopped off arm itself They reproduce, yeah. yes. And then presumably the original starfish will regrow the arm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Kind of like sponges. Like if you chop up a sponge and throw it back in the water, you'll have hundreds of new sponges. So cool. if I tried to kill SpongeBob SquarePants by cutting him you into a million him. pieces, I would make a million more SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> yes, and you yes. do not want to do that. No. Do you want to hear that ridiculous laugh every like no. surrounding you? Just goes to show you that violence doesn't solve problems. <laughs> no, it, it multiplies them exponentially. So let's talk about the tardigrade since we've corrected uh, the mistake from earlier. This is a short little piece here from nationalgeographic.com, published earlier this year. Five reasons why the tardigrade is nature's toughest animal. And they got quite uh, quite some interesting photos and video here uh, of these strange beasts. Aren't they cute? Uh, uh, I could I see how someone would say that about them, but... I'm going to pass. I don't think I want to own a tardigrade. Earth's, <laughs> Just look at their mouth. <laughs> yeah. Earth's most tenacious creature can live in boiling water, solid ice, and the intense radiation of space. It can survive a decade in a desert without a drop of water to drink or in the deepest trenches of the sea. Meet the tardigrade. This week, this was several months ago, on Cosmos, a space-time odyssey, Neil deGrasse Tyson introduced viewers to the tardigrade, or the water bear. The small aquatic invertebrates are nearly invincible, able to tolerate conditions and temperatures that would kill nearly any other living creature. So what gives the tiny tardigrade its enormous strength? Number one, 
tardigrades change to form to survive without water. Change form, rather, to survive without water. When faced with extreme conditions, tardigrades can dry out completely, replacing almost all of the water in their bodies with a sugar called trellos. As a result, they're able to survive environments that would otherwise kill them. Number two, tardigrades' minuscule size hides them from predators. For all their resilience, the tardigrade is one of nature's smallest creatures, barely the size of a poppy seed at less than 1.5 millimeters long. So they are certainly something you could see with your own eye. The tardigrade can exist hidden in sediments and seas unnoticed by potential predators. Number three, tardigrades' mouths contain sharp daggers. Though they may be little, they are fierce. The tardigrade's mouth is a serious weapon. Its dagger-like teeth used to spear algae and uh, or are used to spear algae and even other small animals. Four, tardigrades traveled to space and survived, as we found out earlier. To test the true resilience of tardigrades, Swedish researcher K. Ingemar Jonsson, or Jonsson, from Kristianstad University launched tardigrades into space on the Photon M3 spacecraft in 2007 into low Earth orbit. Exposed to open space conditions, most of the tardigrades survived exposure to vacuum and cosmic rays, with some even surviving deadly levels of UV radiation. And finally, number five, they've been around longer than nearly every other living organism. Tardigrades roamed the Earth and seas far before humans did, and will most likely outlast us. Will the tardigrades be nature's last organisms standing? Only time will tell. Neat stuff. <laughs> I know. It is pretty fascinating. So back I'll, put to this a, I'll put a link up, by the way, to uh, to this on our Facebook page so so you can get an idea of what this thing looks like. It's hard to describe it. Yeah, and Although let us Darryl know whether you think it's cute or not, because I honestly think it's it's kind of uh, terrifying looking. Like you said, it has sharp daggers on its mouth. Yeah, if this thing so was tiny, big, like, it would be terrifying, right? Yeah, well, looking at it close up, it is. It's totally terrifying, and I don't want one of these things on my body somewhere, because <laughs> what if it gets inside of me? It's going to outlive me and oh, yeah. be chewing through my corpse Your intestines. yeah it's <laughs> lovely anyway, so back to this mike.com article its ability to endure such harsh conditions has led scientists to ponder whether it did in fact originate in space the tardigrade yes in other words hmm. an alien so let your imagination run wild. If tardigrades, sea plankton, and other tiny organisms can survive unsheltered in the vast expanses of space, who's to say that their relatives and relatives' descendants never populated or evolved on other worlds the same way life on Earth came about? Scientists have much to learn about the universe, but such findings mark exciting developments hmm. in the ongoing search for extraterrestrial life. I'm hoping the tardigrades just stay where they are and don't get bigger, because if the right. tardigrades... Become well if they've not giants. gotten if they've not gotten this big in half a billion yeah, years, probably chances are next week they're yep. not going to be taking over <laughs> Keene, New Hampshire. There is a certain advantage to being so tiny. Like y yeah. you're not going to be eaten by cats or lions or you know anything else. Well, you else, might, crocodile. but accidentally, and you're so tiny, chances are you're just like slipping through their teeth. Yeah, and you probably just you know dehydrate yourself to survive their their stomach acid and you probably just go through their waste system not even knowing the difference i have to wonder if these video they got like these little clips little animated gifs here of these things they're so small i mean how are these microscopes real? look at it clomping around are, are with they, its little feet these must be real this must be real footage of these things they're so just so weird that they mm. do attach cameras to microscopes now ian yeah, but they've got like the cameras panning closer to a leaf or something, and there's tardigrades up there. It looks very cinematic, I guess, is what I'm saying, and uh, it's surprisingly good footage of these things. I'll share that on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter, and we'll continue in moments with a Bitcoin hater. It's Free Talk Live. The Lumber Liquidators Fall Flooring Kickoff Sale is on with over 250 of the latest styles all on sale now. Get Black Forest Oak Laminate for a crazy 39 cents a square foot. Beautiful and durable bamboo for just $159. Classic pre-finished gunstock oak hardwood for $149. All gorgeous Bella Wood pre-finished hardwood is on sale. Plus get special 24-month financing. Go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Hurry, this sale ends Tuesday the 2nd. The fall flooring season is here. Why aren't you? Friends or family need heart work? Heart bypass in the U.S. is over $150,000. 
Heart valve? Uh, 175. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com announces a limited time promotional special. Heart bypass at 10,300 and heart valve at 129. With a typical 20% Obamacare copay, you can do the flights, hotel, surgery, and goof off in a tropical paradise with money still in your pocket for well under the price of your copay. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com. Did you know coffee is the second most absorbent crop on earth? Most coffee at grocery stores and chains contains banned pesticides and has a high mold content. Seriously, we're proud to partner with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to provide the best of the best coffee, Buzzbox Coffee. Try a free pound today. You cover shipping. 10% of future purchases benefit our efforts to give the gift of human freedom throughout the world. At least 100 World Vision microfinance loans. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done. Get a great deal. And a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, August 29th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,285, silver opened at $19.49, while Bitcoin is trading around $508.39. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. In the news, in the wake of the Michael Brown shooting in Ferguson, Missouri, activists across the country are looking for solutions to the problem of police brutality. Some groups are calling for political action to deal with the issue. Others are circumventing the political channels altogether and taking direct action. One group doing just that is the Huey P. Newton Gun Club. Named after the late co-founder of the Black Panther Party, the Huey P. Newton Gun Club organized an open carry march in downtown Dallas, Texas this week. Organizers of the demonstration say their purpose is twofold, to protect people of their communities from the police and to educate the public about their right to keep and bear arms. After being denied in an appeals court, opponents of Houston's Equal Rights Ordinance are asking the Texas Supreme Court to help them in their efforts to force a referendum on the law. On Tuesday, opponents of the law filed a request seeking to have the court force the city to suspend the measure until another vote takes place. The law, which passed in May, bans discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity, as well as other factors. Is Austin, Texas becoming a nanny state? Well, that's the question that many are asking after two pieces of legislation were passed at Thursday's city council meeting, further restricting the liberties and property rights of Austin residents. The council unanimously passed legislation banning motorists from using cell phones while driving. Well, that follows an ordinance passed in 2010 that banned texting while driving. On top of that, an ordinance authored by Chris Riley, which requires businesses in Austin with single-stall bathrooms to label the bathroom as gender neutral, also passed. The legislation is intended to make transgender people feel more comfortable, but some Austin residents think the city has bigger issues to deal with. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud. All natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And support comes from Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper, 401ks, and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 reason books free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, August 29th, 2014. Make sure you check out our website at thelibertybeat.com. Documents obtained by the News Tribune indicate that the Tacoma Police Department has been quietly operating cell phone surveillance technology since 2008. The tool, known as Stingray, tricks cell phones by pretending to be a cell tower and collecting data from the phone. Deputy City Attorney Michael Smith redacted much of the documents. However, what can be seen reveals the police department has updated their technology as recently as last year. 
A number of Tacoma City Council members stated they were unaware of the technology. A Tacoma Police Department spokeswoman stated the chief could not speak about the technology because of a non-disclosure agreement with the FBI. A federal judge dealt a blow to the efforts of Hawaiians who fought for countywide regulations on genetically modified organisms. Syngenta and other biotechnology companies filed a lawsuit against Kauai County after the council approved an ordinance that required GMO farmers to submit annual reports to government agencies about their crops, as well as no-spray buffer zones. U.S. Magistrate Judge Barry Kernan ruled that the ordinance was preempted by Hawaii state regulations for pesticides, plant quarantines, seed quality, and noxious weeds. However, the ruling does imply that the ordinance was not barred by federal law. The implication is that other counties or cities could pass GMO legislation just so long as it does not interfere with the federal or state laws. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from The Corey Moore Show. With a focus on all things topical and liberty-oriented, Corey Moore and his band of co-hosts, including me, keep a sense of humor while attacking the state. The Corey Moore Show, live each Friday night, 9 o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Eastern, at CoreyMooreShow.com and LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, August 29th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. After visiting his girlfriend of two years at her workplace to deliver an unexpected threat for Valentine's Day, violent and controlling boyfriend Matthew Strachan spoke to The Onion about remaining a devoted and committed abuser. On a special day like today, I like doing something extra malicious for Mallory, you know, just so she knows that I've been thinking about hurting her. I mean, you should have seen the look on her face when I came and surprised her at work today. It was so great. I mean, she had no idea I was going to come to her office to belittle and frighten her. I mean, I wanted to do it in front of her friends to really humiliate her. Strachan added that while he doesn't always get a chance to inflict harm on Mallory, he tries his best each and every day to create an environment of sustained physical and emotional abuse to leave her feeling completely alienated and powerless. Just wait till she sees what I have in store for her tonight. I love Valentine's Day. For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We are here to take your calls about whatever you'd like to discuss. You just dial on in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 3733. Uh, we've talked about everything from renouncing citizenship to tardigrades. I wonder if the tardigrades had to renounce their citizenship before entering space. No, it was after they got there. They couldn't be on Earth while they were renouncing their citizenship. So the toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. We've got a Bitcoin hater we can tell you about here and then uh, Daryl has a story about the MRAP, one of these police tank vehicles that apparently one town might be getting rid of. Instead of militarizing their police, they may actually be doing some demilitarizing of the police. But first, from the New York Post, this guy's name is John Crudell. And his last name is spelled C-R-U-D-E-L-E. And his attitude is kind of cruddy uh, towards Bitcoin here. His article is called MIT Students Engineering Bitcoin Scheme. In the near future, the leaders of Massachusetts Institute of Technology will have to decide whether they want to take part in the worldwide scam known as Bitcoin. I hope the grown-ups at that esteemed Cambridge, Massachusetts school have more common sense than the students they're supposed to be guiding. Here's the root of MIT's dilemma. A couple of students want to give each of the university's 4,500 undergraduates $100 worth of Bitcoin this fall. The pair says they have raised half a million dollars to fund the project. That $100 represents about a fifth of a Bitcoin for each student. The value of a Bitcoin, and he puts the word value in quotes, he says that I use the word value lightly, is now about $515 although the price has been varying wildly, uh, depending on how many gullible investors, he puts that in quotes, its backers can get to buy into the scam. 
Bitcoins are, he says, essentially a confidence game. These things only have value if someone is confident of their value. But couldn't the same be said about anything on the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, the S&P 500, the Hong Kong Exchange, the Tokyo Exchange, any— The U.S. dollar? But I don't think the U.S. dollar is traded on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. No, but he's talking about it being a confidence game that you have to have confidence in. it. You have to have confidence that other people are going to take the dollar, right? right? And but, you know, like with stocks, and I've heard a lot of people try to compare Bitcoin to stocks. They're like, well, the value, it's because of exchanges, kind of like stocks. Because there's a demand for it. Right. But it's something that, you know, stocks could, it could be said the same about stocks or the dollar. That, you know, it only has value because people think it has value. Mm -hmm. It's true. That's absolutely true. The only reason why Bitcoin's worth something is because it's worth something. Right. Because people but, want it and people yeah. are using it. You but can, I don't think this Credell guy would acknowledge the same statement about oh, the U.S. Not. dollar or stocks or you know the petrodollar or anything else. Well, Bitcoin seems, uh, you know, it's new territory. It's this decentralized currency. For those of you who do not know, uh, Bitcoin was released to the world about five years ago by someone named Satoshi Nakamoto. And maybe that is one person, maybe it's a group of people, maybe it's a lady, maybe it's a guy. No one knows anything about maybe Satoshi it's a tardigrade. Nakamoto. Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so that was released to the world and has since become the most valuable currency in the world. One Bitcoin currently worth over 500 US dollars. And Bitcoins can be divided down by t uh, eight decimal points. So you don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin when you buy Bitcoin. You can buy a tenth of a Bitcoin or a hundredth of a Bitcoin or whatever amount. You could buy a fraction of a penny's worth of Bitcoin if you wanted to do so. If you could find someone who was willing to take the time to sell you a fraction of a penny's worth of Bitcoin. Well, if I gave you, you know, like some Chinese currency that based on transaction, you know, like, uh, currency exchanges would be mm -hmm. like, you know, like, here's a Chinese penny that's worth a tenth of a penny or whatever. Or like, here's a piece of gum and uh, that's 10 cents. Oh, that's if I wanted your Chinese penny, right? Right. Uh, so, and that's the thing. Some people don't want Bitcoin. And so it can seem it's a new territory and not everybody accepts it. But Dell Computer is. And Wikipedia is accepting it and thousands of other companies around the world. The Probably the biggest uh, announcement to date of someone accepting Bitcoin, Budweiser, what? has announced that for their music festival, they will be accepting Bitcoin. Wow. Wow. That's that's probably great. That Think news rolled the, out uh, today. Alcoholics out there that are using Bitcoin. <laughs> now wait, this is like some sort of national thing, or what is it? They, they've got a big music festival every year, apparently, and okay. I had never heard of this thing until I got my email from Coinbase. So buying tickets with Bitcoin. You can buy tickets with Bitcoin. Presumably, Sweet. you can buy merchandise at the festival. There's a college football bowl game that's going to happen on New Year's Day where you can buy tickets with Bitcoin, awesome. and it's actually being sponsored by BitPay. So uh, Bitcoins, he says, are a confidence game. Now, confidence game usually describes something uh, like a, a scam run by criminals, right? That's that's like a con man is running a confidence game, typically. That's I usually... would consider the stock market to be a confidence game. That's a game run by criminals, sure. Mm. And uh, so he—, he so, it's ridiculous to call Bitcoin a confidence game. Uh, you don't have to have confidence. You don't have to have belief that Bitcoin's going to work. If you know your stuff with programming, you can audit the code. If you have the, the chops, I don't. And I don't know if either of you do. I don't think you guys are programmers. No. But Secretly. Are you a programmer? Secretly. It wouldn't surprise me. You've got the, <laughs> I know some HTML. Yeah, I can do I can do HTML as well, but that's about it. No, um, honestly, I I don't have any chops either when I, it comes to this. I, I did take some programming chops. classes in school, in high school, but those are like almost that was completely like twenty years ago. Yeah, so those are totally useless today. Uh, but if you know how to program, you can read the code. And so if you think there's something scammy about Bitcoin, if like, you know, you think there's some sort of secret backdoor where somebody who uh, Satoshi Nakamoto is going to come in someday and raid everybody's Bitcoin account or something like that. I don't know what the paranoia would be, but something like that. Then you could read the code and you could see if there were any backdoors uh, put into Bitcoin. You could see if it was a legit program. And obviously it's legit. Because it's been around for five years and no one's been able to hack into Bitcoin. Bitcoin is untouchable. 
as far as all the evidence is. Now, that doesn't mean that something couldn't happen tomorrow, but at $500 of Bitcoin, there's a high incentive for hackers to come in there and try to take some of these things and try to work the system. But they yeah, can't. And some people have had accounts that have been compromised because they didn't do you know what was necessary to protect the account right but they, that's not the they did same. the equivalent of leaving their wallet out on a bench somewhere and right. walking away for a, you know 3 hours right that that's not the same as bitcoin being hacked you know credit card information is stolen all the time oh, yeah. but nobody says oh see credit cards they're a scam people steal credit card info yeah, nobody. Uh, this guy is not going to call credit cards crap, but he'll about he's about to call bitcoins that. He says, anytime I write negatively about Bitcoin, the loons come out to fight with me. So now you understand my position on this crap. The students, of course, think differently, and someone, probably one of the people who stand to gain by keeping this charade going, gave five hundred thousand dollars to the MIT kids. Well, everybody stands to gain if they take part in it. Plus, like, who is he to decide who's the loon and what part of this is a scam? Anybody like, that he, disagrees honestly, with him is a loon. Right, but don't you think he would sound a lot more professional and believable if he was pre- presenting at least some sort of argument here instead of saying, like, oh, yeah, you're all crazies if right. you, you participate in this monopoly this money scheme? That's right. All he is doing here is essentially insulting Bitcoin and the Bitcoin users. He hasn't actually said anything of substance yet that back up his position. And his position is clearly that Bitcoin is a scam and is Bitcoin's dangerous. Bitcoin's bad, okay? Honestly, yeah. if he hated it so much, don't you think he would try to not give it attention? Like, not write articles and draw people's attention You'd away from think, it? you think, Ellen, but it seems like people don't understand that lesson. We were just talking last night about uh, some Christians... Uh, specifically the Catholic Archdiocese in Oklahoma City, who are making a huge stink about a black mass that's supposed to be happening in Oklahoma City and have brought all kinds of attention to the black mass as a result of that. We'll come back with more here in moments. What does this guy have to say? Well, he's got more, and we'll continue with that. And he's upset about this Bitcoin thing. How dare these tech students at MIT give away Bitcoin to uh, thousands of students? They're just putting them all in danger of being taken advantage of. 855 450 free. You can share your thoughts here on Free Talk Live. Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, now well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, look for the green box at your favorite store. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. Most people think you have to seek out a God for finding meaning in life, but really meaning comes from your awareness yeah. that your next move will have a consequence to you, whether good or bad. The meaning is created by the, the person having the experience. It's inside experience, you. Sir. Your awareness that your next move will have a consequence for your positive or negative view of the world. Mm. 
and that's I, where all meaning comes from. And I fully believe that it's your interpretation of your experiences, how you decide to act as a result of the circumstances that surround you, that uh, will ultimately decide your fate here as far as, you know, will you have a pleasant experience or will it be right. a hellacious one? I believe that I believe heaven in heaven and, and hell, but I believe that they exist right every now. moment. Like, you right can now. choose heaven and hell, yeah. and the people that do bad things experience hell because doing bad things results in bad stuff. But you can always choose otherwise. You can begin at any sure. moment sure. to start over Sinners again. Sinners can be redeemed. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. All you have to do is just dial in toll free here at 855 450 free. We've got a hater, someone who hates Bitcoin. He is being very rude and insulting towards uh, Bitcoin supporters and Bitcoin as an idea. We'll continue that here from the New York Post in moments. But if you are ready to jump into the world of Bitcoin, and you know, I wouldn't recommend you put all your money into Bitcoin, that'd be crazy. Uh, it's a currency. You should have multiple currencies to be alternatives, I think, from the federal government, the Federal Reserve note. And Bitcoin can help you diversify in that way. And also, Bitcoin has an amazing upside potential. I mean, it's already $500 per Bitcoin. It could be $5,000 someday. It could be $50,000 per Bitcoin. Of course, it could also go down to $5 per Bitcoin. I mean, who knows what's going to happen in the future? Uh, but what's happening now with Bitcoin is very exciting. There are major companies around the world who are accepting Bitcoin, and even companies who don't accept Bitcoin are accepting it without even really kind of knowing it by companies like uh, Gift.com. Earlier today, Daryl, you actually purchased a uh, Home Depot gift card for someone else who was giving you Bitcoin to kind of buy a card for them yes. through Gift.com, G-Y-F-T. Now, they're, the, they're not a sponsor of the show, but I would love them to be. Uh, but uh, Gift's an awesome service where you can use Bitcoin to buy gift cards for things like places like Amazon, Target. I think they've got you know restaurants in there. They've got like 200 different places that you can get gift cards from. It's a huge selection. Again, Target and, uh, and Amazon, those two alone can get you thousands of, of products. So Bitcoin's amazing. It's becoming more and more accepted over time by more companies. But yet these people in the old world, people like John Crudell over at the New York Post, these old school money guys and bankers, the people that have been in the old money system for all their lives, they hate Bitcoin. And they hate it because they probably see the writing on the wall. They probably know to some extent that this is a threat to the existing money monopoly. Well, just imagine, Ian, if these guys were around about 120 years ago when the automobile was first coming about, they would be saying, oh, this automobile is a scam. Mm. It's going to, you know, all, all of these young people, they should embra be embracing the horse and carriage. The automobile is just a scam. Well, didn't uh, some people say that the windshield wipers were going to hypnotize drivers? Didn't people say that about the internet, too? <laughs> that it would hypnotize people? That, that it was a true. scam. That oh, okay. The internet was just a fad. 
The internet's yeah. just a fad. It'll go away soon. So back to the story here. This is from the New York Post. The man writing is John Crudell, and he's talking about MIT. Apparently, a couple students have raised half a million dollars to give away $100 worth of Bitcoin to all 4,500 students in the school, or the undergraduate students, I guess. Anyway, the guy goes on here. He says that they have raised the money, and he's skeptical about the person who donated. He says that someone stands to gain by keeping the charade going, and that person is the person who gave the $500,000 to the MIT kids. Yeah, because the average person who's a scam artist is going to give away five hundred thousand yeah. dollars to some college students. That makes total sense. That that's how you that's how they bring you in. Ian, yeah, give you give, half a million dollars. They first. give you half a million dollars, <laughs> and then you're hooked. Well, yeah, isn't that what uh, isn't that what the guys in the Nigerian email scams are? Oh no, they still want money from you first. That's yeah, they're right. like, they we, we need two hundred dollars as a deposit to be able to give you this fourteen million dollar right. something something. So the students on the website for what's called the MIT Bitcoin Project say this, quote, Bitcoin is a new technology that's revolutionizing the transactional economy. As the world's leading research institution, MIT should be at the forefront of Bitcoin innovation. To this end, we're giving every MIT undergraduate $100 in Bitcoin this fall, unquote. And the author here says, not so fast. There doesn't seem to be anything MIT or anyone else can do about people throwing away their money, but the university now has to decide whether it believes in Bitcoin enough to accept that $100 as payment for anything school-related. Well, who says they're going to pay for things at school with their $100 uh, in Bitcoin? If you've got Bitcoin, you can spend it anywhere. It's not just accepted on the MIT campus. But if you're going to co- if you're a college student, uh, you're probably spending a lot of money on books and tuition, true, and, and food plans and and things like that. So I imagine that, uh, you know, whatever spare money they have, if if they're not spending it out on the taverns, they're probably using it for school purposes. Will the students be able to put their one hundred dollars in Bitcoin toward a school book at the university run bookstore? How about toward burgers and fries at the student center? Will MIT allow that one hundred Bitcoin to go through one tenth of one percent of room and board? Or to go toward one tenth of one percent of room and board? Students are supposed to act in an irresponsible manner and stretch the limits of common sense. And responsible grown ups are supposed to pull them back before they hurt themselves or the ideals of society. What does that supposed even mean? Supposed to be? So, pe- so students are supposed to be, Petulant by definition, children. yes, irresponsible, not capable of handling themselves. I mean, who says that this is like a, a writ somewhere it's that people... It's ridiculous. <laughs> you cannot violate this principle. I want to know what he means when he says the ideals of society. Responsible grown-ups are supposed to pull them back before they hurt themselves Or the ideals of society. Look, if these are just a bunch of kids playing around with their techno toy. Respect your elders. Then who cares? Listen to what they say. When they tell you what to do, it's not them being draconian. It's them just caring for you and telling you what the best thing to do is. If they realize that they can function without our banks, then this whole system will just fall apart. Yeah. They must understand and respect the ideals of our society. And our society says that they will use my institution for transferring funds. Really, it just sounds yeah. kind of whiny, the way that he's writing it. We like, must this remind them to happen. why they need, need us. us. Toll free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. You can share your thoughts. There's more here from John Crudell. And we'll continue that. But also want to let you know about ExpressCoin. I mentioned if you're ready to get into Bitcoin, never actually finished my thought. If you're ready to get into Bitcoin, you can do that right now by going to ExpressCoin.com. And you can buy Bitcoin. You can also buy Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, and Darkcoin, which will really upset John Crudell uh, when you do that. Because there's more than just Bitcoin out there. But anyway, ExpressCoin, they've got great uh, customer service. And you can buy your Bitcoin with money order, check, wire transfer, even cash deposit. It really doesn't get easier than ExpressCoin.com, and it doesn't get cheaper. Uh, ExpressCoin.com, when you buy less than $40 worth of Bitcoin and use code FTL, you will get the Bitcoin for no transaction fee, meaning cost is zero. Beyond the time it takes you to complete the transaction, the cost is zero at ExpressCoin.com. Now, if you order more than $40 worth, 
there is then it's three percent, which is the lowest transaction fee you're going to find out there uh, that I've ever seen. So check it out, and you can actually do it now from Canada, ExpressCoin.com. We'll continue with more of the Bitcoin hater here. John Crudell, he's mad. He's mad that all these techno geeks at MIT, how dare they? They're just petulant children playing with their toys, their electronic money toys. You can't buy books with Bitcoin. You can't buy schooling. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Of course, you could go and buy books on Amazon with the gift.com card that you bought with Bitcoin. And I think they sell school books on Amazon, textbooks and things like that. We're coming up. This is Free Talk Live. Hi, I'm Phil Grandy from Phil's Gang. If you've been nervous about investing in the current stock market, then you need to listen up. Phil's Gang is having a free webinar on Saturday, September 13th. That's going to be at noon Eastern time. You're going to learn how to invest in this type of market. Not just the stock market, but you're going to be investing in yourself. Don't miss it. To sign up, go to LearnStocksForFree.com. That's LearnStocksForFree.com or call 877-600-4264. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. Do you think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DownsizedDC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got into the bill. One congressman questioned said, I didn't write it, I didn't approve it, I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DownsizedDC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizedDC.org. Ladies, with a U.S. divorce rate near 30% in this job market, looks matter. Breast enhancement or reduction. A tummy tuck or a little lipo can work wonders on you and your confidence. With hospital rates at fractions of U.S. prices, and thanks to the recent Thai coup, unheard of low airfare and jaw-dropping deals on luxury hotel rooms. Provide a little info. Get a quote. Hit us up at asiarunlikehellguide.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. So if you're on Medicare and have knee pain, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost. Friendly agents are standing by 24 7 to help you we also have other pain relieving braces too for your shoulder ankle or back you may be eligible to get these items and more at little or no out-of-pocket cost our friendly representatives are standing by now to help you so please call now 800-301-2963 800-301-2963 800-301-2963 800-301-2963 If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm.
This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Free coffee? Yeah, we got that. All you have to do is pay the shipping price, which is very fairly low, for uh, some really great coffee over at BuzzBox. Coffee.freetalklive.com is where you can go to get signed up for their auto-ship program. And for every 10 listeners that does that, we can actually finance a loan through World Vision, a micro-loan. And the World Vision program is going to be coming to an end soon, so we're going to be announcing a new chari- uh, charitable effort that will be benefiting, uh, but I believe it's still in progress right now. So go to coffee.freetalklive.com. It's 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica, shade grown. This is good coffee. In fact, Mark drinks a pot of this stuff every single day. Uh, you can help out, make people's lives better for themselves through these microloans through World Vision. Again, every 10 listeners that signs up at coffee.freetalklive.com can finance one of those microloans for people. And again, you get on an auto ship program, which means that you can have your coffee, the, pre- per- the preferred taste that you want, uh, type sent to your home, sent to your business, wherever you want it sent, sent as often as you want it sent. So maybe you, you know, maybe you need a pound a month. Okay, you can do that. Maybe you need a pound every two weeks. You can do that, too. So uh, whatever your customization, you can set it up at coffee.freetalklive.com. You just pay the shipping cost. You get your first pound for free, and you can cancel the subscription anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. We'll go back to the Bitcoin hater in a moment. Uh, We've got Ryan on the line first, listening in Charleston, West Virginia, to WVTS. Hello, Ryan. Hello. uh, Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Go ahead. Um, I just had three quick points I want to make. One, about the college students at MIT, that you said they were using Bitcoin, testing out Bitcoin. Yeah, there's um, actually a program where the college, a couple college students have raised half a million dollars to give away $100 worth of Bitcoin okay. to each undergraduate. So 4,500 students will receive Bitcoin this fall. That's very interesting. I want to see it unfold considering, you know, we have a dollar that's continually you know, being devalued. And it shows that people are still willing to trade, you know, goods and services just using by a different means of uh, currency or, you know, payment. And also, too, my second point was that if we somehow think that the quantitative easing can last forever or at least a long time and that it's a good thing in the long run, I think we're going to be like lemmings at a circus that continually grows adult and has more candy to spend. So ultimately, it's the well-connected bureaucrats and tech heads to get the helium that drives easily to the sky while most of us stay on the ground. And, yeah, that's true. Uh, just to recap, and, I mean, uh, just to explain further what you're saying there, quantitative easing is uh, sort of a buzzword that the government guys were using to explain inflation. I mean, where they essentially yes. print out a bunch of money, and then when the government prints out money or increments money in a, a computer system somewhere, makes basically creates it from thin air. Uh, then the yeah. people who get paid that money first are the ones who benefit the most from it. After that, it begins to just sort of filter down into the rest of the economy, meaning there's more dollars chasing the same amount of goods in circulation, so therefore prices tend to rise. People are generally confused about inflation. They believe that inflation is a rise in prices, but that's not true. Inflation is an increase in the money supply, which tends to result in an increase in prices because, again, more money is chasing the same amount of goods, so prices tend to go up. Uh, But yeah, that's what quantitative easing is. It's just mass money printing with the idea that that somehow going to fix things and ultimately it doesn't fix anything it just gets us in deeper and deeper into problems and and yeah bitcoin is one way for people to insulate themselves from the u.s dollar and it's and the damage that's happening with the u.s dollar and you know it's like it you know it ends up generating a landfill of displaced value and nor does that money that's printed have to reflect be reflected in value obviously that's somewhat subject subjective but still um like you said it is just a computer system and not reflecting necessarily anything of a true value. My third point that I just want to make was that if the dollar continues to go like this, whoa, whoa, I'm willing whoa, whoa, to... Whoa, Before you go on the third point, I don't know if I really understood your second point. What were you saying about it's a computer system and so what? Well, well like you said, when, you know, the Fed prints more money, mm-hmm. you know, on paper it looks, you know, very. it can look very great. They can, you know, cook the books to make it, you know, look beneficial you know, as a whole, and that it, but it doesn't necessarily have to reflect the value that, you know, is generated in the economy to make up for it. And like you, and also too, it's, it's computerized and that it, it can, you can make it look good on computer, but it doesn't always look so good in reality. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, third point, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Oh yeah. My third point was, um, if the dollar continues to 
to fall, I'm willing to trade, you know, let's say water for gasoline and that most everyone consumes water or everyone does consume water to some measurable extent, but the gasoline most people consume. So, you know, we could start with a dime a dollar for, you know, cast the water respectively and go from there. But um, I just think that the uh, MIT students, have, it's a good reflection of what's really going on in the economy with people trying to have a good personal economy that not only benefits them, but everyone. And, you know, everyone can kind of have a, Forget the dollar if it fails mentality. And, yeah, you know, the more really we can fun. create outside of the dollar, the better off. The more business yeah, we can do exactly. outside of the dollar, the better off we all are. Because the the more we're doing outside of the dollar, the more likely it's going to be off the books. It's going to be something the government won't be able to tax. And so that'll right. mean that we'll all benefit more from each transaction that we can do outside of the government money system. And the less that we're relying on the dollar for our day-to-day -day business and transactions, the less control they can have over us. Because he who controls the money basically controls a whole lot of close to everything. Ryan, thanks for your call tonight, man. I appreciate it. And Bitcoin's worth looking closer at. I mean, look, you don't have to be an MIT student to understand Bitcoin. You don't have to know the inner workings of Bitcoin and the programming and the crypto, uh, cryptography that goes on on the inside of Bitcoin to know that it works. You don't have to know those things to know how to use Bitcoin. In fact, weusecoins.com is a great site to go and get a good intro. They've got a nice little two-minute long video there on the site and all kinds of handy links to help you learn more about Bitcoin. So I... I like watching various YouTube videos and one of the ones that I watched not too long ago it's from a series called like Kids React. I uh, love and they, those. They had kids react to an instructional video about the internet. Uh, yeah, from the 90s, from right? 1997. Yeah, yeah, I saw And that. these kids are like I know all of this stuff. Wait, <laughs> I've never heard of that website before. I've never heard of that website, but like What's I, Netscape? Yeah, what's <laughs> that what's Juno? Never heard yeah. of it. So I imagine that in, you know, another 16 years or so mm -hmm. that cryptocurrency is just going to be so ingrained into society that if, you know, they have one of these shows still around on the internet, they're like, okay, so we're going to show you a video that came out in like 2012, an introduction to Bitcoin. <laughs> Or better yet, hand them a wallet, like an actual wallet that people would carry in their pockets. <laughs> yeah, it'll be just one step above chalkboard for them. What's all these papers in here? I don't even understand. The videos you're talking about, I mentioned them earlier this week, actually. The React channel is what yes. you're talking about. Yeah, it started out as the Fine Brothers, and then they started a new channel that's called right. React. Yeah, and that's because this was a huge thing for them. I mean, these React videos get millions of views and... They're so entertaining. Well, yeah, some of they're funny because like children have such a fresh perspective on yes. everything. Like I, I remember watching one where uh, they were trying to turn on a computer from An like old the seventies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're just sitting there like, "What do I do? Oh, you have to push the button on the back. On the back. Why is yeah. it so far in the back? What do I do now? Where's the internet? <laughs> Type in <laughs> yeah. something. Where's Type the in internet? Anything. There's two colors on the screen, black and yellow. You know, that those old computers. <laughs> they try typing in things, but nothing responds. It was hilarious. I saw that one. There's one with them playing with an old rotary dial phone. Yes. Another one with an old typewriter. And just classic stuff. See, I remember using rotary for phones when I was younger. Oh wow! And well, I you didn't go actually, way back. <laughs> well, my grandparents had one, but it it wasn't like was the it the pulse tile where you could hear it go. T -t 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 -t. It, yeah, actually, it was. It wasn't the traditional <laughs> one where it, it it's got the huge handset and mm -hmm. uh, it was actually um, it was more like a souvenir that they got somewhere because it had Goofy the uh, Disney oh, character okay. on it. Okay, yeah. but it was still a rotary phone and. I, I thought that was pretty easy to understand. It was just a big waste of time. And the kids had a tough time with it in the video, like really? understanding how to dial on the phone. <laughs> you just spin it. Yeah, it's not complicated, no. but, you know, if you've never seen it before, I suppose it'd be hard to figure out. 855, 450 free. That's, it's just, just outside of their realm, you know, like they're used to everything just being on the screen. Not having to actually interact with anything physical. 855-450-3733. Reflect on old technology. Talk about Bitcoins. Whatever's on your mind goes. Oh, and Ghostbusters is back in the theaters. I wish I could see it. Free Talk Live. Wake up and smell the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help Liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. 
You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. Simply go to freedomfiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. I'm Chuck Woolery. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I really don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream. It's an arthritis pain relief cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn. It isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee, so you can use a whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt that you'll send it back. You know, the stuff really works. Get Australian Dream at Walgreens, CVS, or Walmart. You'll be glad you did. Americans, prepare for financial ruin. That is what one of the world's richest men, Donald Trump, said just a few weeks ago. What are you doing to prepare? The problems that caused the last financial crisis were not fixed. In fact, they're even worse now. The total amount of debt in the U.S. has grown by more than 57% since September 2008. The two big-to-fail banks are much larger, and the massive derivatives bubble is spiraling so far out of control that the only thing left to do is watch the spectacular crash landing that is inevitably coming. If you're a baby boomer with retirement funds, it's time you consider exiting the Wall Street casino and start a cash-flowing international business of your own. There may be ways to preserve your wealth, but history has shown that few things can grow your wealth like having your own business. The crash is coming. Take measures now to soften the landing. Go to babyboomerbackupplan.com or call 888-507-8789. That's babyboomerbackupplan.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Hi, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. The internet has lowered the cost barrier for a worldwide radio show to a price approaching zero. Yet there is one arena where you still need thousands of dollars to approach the audio quality of the corporate media. Doing a live spoken show with more than one host in different geographic locations. Our program, Fiend Phone, will solve that problem and it will be given away free. Go to fiendphone.com to see what you can do to help. That's F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E dot com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and it's been a while since we've had a good hate article about Bitcoin. I'm sure they've been out there. I just, they just haven't come across my desk. Because there are a lot of people who uh, are hating on the Bitcoin, at least a lot of people in the old money system, the people who have, oh, I don't know, investments in the old ways. Maybe they uh, they happen to own stock in a bank or something like that, or they are a banker, or they're you know one of those investment advisors who would never want to have anybody think outside of the box or try anything new. Uh, so a lot of people are upset about Bitcoin, and we're going to continue with that piece here in moments. Your calls and thoughts are welcome. Please join us at 855-450-FREE. You don't have to talk about Bitcoin to get on the air here. You can bring up anything that's on your mind. And joining, uh, joining me tonight, I'm Ian. Alan. And Daryl. Daryl's here courtesy of his website, fpp.cc. What will people find at fpp.cc? 
people will find daily news from various sources. There's also weekly news and commentary that I contribute every Sunday. There's also links to radio programs that I do. Shows and other than Free Talk Live. A newspaper. You're working on a new paper that's coming a out soon. A newspaper, yes. Uh, I will be able to get it sent to the printer on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. There's this little thing called a holiday on Monday. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'd be able to get it to them on Monday, but I'll get that to them on Tuesday. It's a monthly newspaper that I put out for free. And available online in PDF form. Available online in PDF form. People can download, send it to their print shop, print it, distribute That'd be wherever awesome. they want. Or come to Keene, and you can pick it up at various locations in real yes. life. So speaking of the holiday on Monday, Labor Day, yes. I don't understand why it's called Labor Day, but everybody gets the day off. Like, Yeah, it's <laughs> ridiculous. Well, it started out... Uh, it's a commie movement, right? It, it is. Yeah. And the reason in the U.S. it's celebrated in September is because the U.S. government wanted to make sure that everybody knew that it was distinct from May the... Day? socialist sort of thing of you know celebrate the worker that happens may 1st right. in most of the other world so they put it in september and it was initially called laborers day and then was shortened to just labor day okay so it's like the hammer and sickle holiday mm, yeah. yes that pretty much sums yes it, up. it is <laughs> So our but talking... aren't all government holidays pretty much a hammer and sickle holiday? <laughs> yeah, but I don't think the government really has to enforce. Like, if the government just stepped out right now and was like, we're not going to enforce any of these holidays, I'm pretty sure people would still be uh, celebrating this by not going to work. Like, everybody would think, oh, well, it's nice to have the day off, so don't, why don't we just all agree to not go to work on That's this day? That's all it really is. I don't think people really have I – think, I think most people don't really know what Labor Day is about. Most people don't know what the 4th of July is about. That's true. Ian. It's Independence Day, not the 4th of July. So, yeah, people get that one wrong all the time. Hey, well, let's get back to the story. This is uh, from the New York Post. Author is John Crudell. He's angry because MIT students – he thinks, very childishly, will be playing with their internet money. And he's very angry about it because two MIT students have raised half a million dollars to give $100 U.S. dollars worth of Bitcoin to every student uh, in their graduate program coming up this fall. So over 4,500 students will be receiving Bitcoin. And this guy is mad. He says students are supposed to act in an irresponsible manner and stretch the limits of common sense. And responsible grown-ups are supposed to pull them back before they hurt themselves or the ideals of society. Well, that sounds kind of like a misguided compliment, doesn't it? Like, students are supposed to be irresponsible. This is too responsible for people to be doing right now at this d well, age no, in their lives. Well, no, he's suggesting this is irresponsible. He's suggesting that... that You're toying, helping them be irresponsible by just giving them money. Toying around with this internet money is dangerous, Ellen. Right, and but why would he say that students are supposed to be irresponsible and then get upset when somebody is handing out something that he considers irresponsible? Well, he wants it all to stop. He wants it to be stopped before it starts. He wants to somehow talk someone out of this. I don't know who he's going to talk out of it because, as he points out here, MIT would not comment on whether it would accept Bitcoins in payment for anything. He says we'll soon see just how much MIT wants to cooperate with the Bitloons, which is a new one. I've never heard that one before. <laughs> Bitloons. Bitloons. <laughs> oh, that just gave me a brilliant idea for a business. Okay. You sell balloons for Bitcoins. Bitloons. 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 I've just come up with, he says, the most convoluted economic theory ever, and I'm going to share it with you because I know Wall Street will love it. Be patient while I set the stage. Oh, you know what? This has nothing to do with Bitcoins. This is like one of those multi-part articles where he touches on various different things. So that was it. He ends his article with uh, calling people who support Bitcoin bit loons. Right, but he also says that people are supposed to be irresponsible when they're students. Students, yes. And he's upset about them. Uh, Being you know. irresponsible. Well, his it, no, it sounded like he was he was upset that they weren't being irresponsible. No, no, he no. Like, he is he's sa what he's saying is is that students are supposed to be irresponsible, and that's what he is seeing from them. He says he he believes bitcoins are dangerous, they're stupid, and so therefore he he equivalent um he equates he, yeah he he essentially believes that bitcoins are the equivalent to a crazy hot college party with date rape. 
I mean, that's essentially what this guy <laughs> thinks about Bitcoin. So he considers the idea of just giving out all these Bitcoins or having any interaction whatsoever with Bitcoins to be irresponsible. And it is his, it's his job as the mature adult who is experienced to talk some sense into these youngsters. Right, but but he's arguing that like youngsters are irresponsible naturally, and to respect this social system that we have now, the adults you know are there to protect and guide you. So doesn't that mean that you should be letting these people do whatever they consider irresponsible? No, no, he's trying because to stop you have them. to guide them back to respecting society. He or says you have something. To, no, no, no. The words are you have to pull them back. The adults, the responsible adults like him have to pull the students back before they hurt themselves. So, whoa, whoa, don't load that Bitcoin wallet, son. That could lead towards all kinds of things. Be careful what you're doing. I imagine, like, one of those films from the 40s or 50s where the father sits down on the bed with the son, and he's like, so, son, before you go out on your date tonight, let me tell you a few things. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> so I wonder what uh, this Cradell guy would think about the Let the Bit Drop campaign. Is this the island nation that will be receiving Bitcoin? Yes. It was right. recently announced the you would hate it, I imagine. Uh, name of the island. And uh, it's an island with a population of roughly 70,000 people. Mm -hmm. And on March 14th, 2015 at 926 a.m. And they chose that date and time for a specific reason. It is Pi Day. 3.14159 My favorite two, day six. of the year. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know March that. is 3. Yeah. 14, 3.14, then 15 for the two digits of the year, and 926. So it's the mm -hmm. you know, first part of the uh, numeric formula pi. So that exact date and time, everyone on the island nation of Dominica will receive some Bitcoin. Not Dominica. It's not Dominica, it's Dominica. Was Some it ever? Bitcoin. Dominica? It's spelled that way, not but it's like the Dominican Republic? This is not different the same country. place? Okay. The is it close? Commonwealth of Dominica. Are They're they both in the, in the Caribbean. Is it spelled okay. with a Q or a C? With a C. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Because if it was spelled with a Q, I could imagine like some sassy person, like Dominica. Dominica. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, when you say some Bitcoin, how yeah, much is that? Yeah, how's this going to work anyway? Yeah, who's you don't giving just, out the Bitcoin? Uh, you don't just helicopter a bunch of Bitcoin into somebody. So what? Are they, well, what? it's a uh, collective of people. And according to the website, letthebitdrop.com, it says that Coinapult, Aspen Assurance, Bitcoin Beauties, the College Cryptocurrency Network, and Free Talk Live are going to be involved, but Ian, you've what? said that you have no First clue I've about Free it. Talk Live's involvement. <laughs> and it's they awesome. also, because they're still raising the funds. Well, we know some of the guys from Coin Coinapole. Right, but because they're still raising the funds. Wait, is it Coinapult or Coinabole? I think there's two sites. Coinapult, Coinapult. with a P. Okay. Uh, they have not yet announced how much Bitcoin I everybody's going to get because they're... I wonder how it's going to work, though. Like, how are they going to deliver it to people? Will it be a claim system? Maybe there really mm -hmm. will be a helicopter coming in and dropping, like, addresses. Well, that, that could people. happen. You're yeah. right. You could uh, print out some paper wallets. There's a uh, Q&A from Cointelegraph with All right. the lady who's the project manager, What's Sarah What's the website Blinko. people can go to learn more about this? Uh, LetTheBitDrop.com. It's an interesting idea. I don't know how it's going to work. It, it's fascinating. We'll watch it as we get closer to it. We are almost out of time for tonight, but I also want to invite you to Keenvention 2014. The uh, schedule is rounding up. The, we haven't announced everything that's happening yet, uh, but more. More announcements have been made. Keenvention's your chance to come to New Hampshire. Check it out during the fall. It's a little bit uh, chilly during Keenvention, so it's a great time to get together. And it's actually an intimate convention, meaning there'll probably be about around 100 people attending if all goes well. I don't know what the current numbers are, 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 are you know, projected to be, but it was fun last year and. Uh, it's a great excuse to come up here. It's happening October 31st through November 2nd. You can go to keenvention.info, learn more about the event there, watch videos from last year, see what it was like, and buy your tickets for just 60 bucks or Bitcoin. And if you really want to upset the Bitcoin haters, you can buy your Bitcoin your tickets with Bitcoin. Go to keenvention.info. We'll see you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are 
having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The Corey Moore Show is coming up next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, August 29th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.55 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,286 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $506. Antiwar.com reports, in a speech yesterday afternoon, President Obama talked up the Iraq war in the broadest terms possible, praising the bravery of pilots launching airstrikes in the country, and again taking credit for saving those folks on the mountain, presumably referring to the large mythical Yazidi calamity that was the initial pretext for the conflict. At the same time, he denied any existing plan to expand the war into Syria, and indeed claimed we don't have a strategy at all in place for any part of the war yet, saying that asking Congress for permission for the war right now would be putting the cart before the horse until he figures out how big of a war it will be. The White House later clarified that that was no military strategy. Having no strategy at all would certainly